Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Didn't mean to jump scare you. I know that you guys are not accustomed to seeing me at the beginning of the show instead of Brett. And the reason for that is because Brett died uh, in a brutal skating accident. And we're still mourning, but the show goes on. <laughs> no, uh, it's actually because Kellen is pulling the marionette strings today. That's right. Uh, I'm pushing the buttons today. I'm doing all I can over here. I did mean to jump scare you guys, and I thought Brett died <laughs> in a bear attack. It I was thought. a bear attack. It was a bear. Uh, okay, yeah, you had to fight off a bear. It was a bear attack. They're, they're referring to, can they see the, the mark in my arm? I don't think they can see the mark in you, my arm. I think you can see. Yeah, you got, that's fine. You got injured yeah, over there. Can, see it there. Yeah, you can see the scrape there. It's fine. It's pretty bad. Yeah, I can't, it's really hard. So here's the thing. Uh, I can't hit the buttons today because my arm hurts even though I hit the buttons with the other hand. That's what it is. The How pain do you is feel about losing control? Um, I'm actually more nervous right now than I've ever been on this show. At least not since we, <laughs> not since we went Likewise. live. I'm literally like trying to reach over there to the buttons to kill him to, to do that. So, you know. God I, I honestly think our view, viewers are like more uh, accustomed to the routine than even you are. Well, yeah, so like maybe this point. is going to be a, an adjustment for all of us where we all just need to, you know, get into the swing of things together. And, then, and somebody says Brett looks lost. I think what they're referring to is the... The, the fact the, that you keep swinging back and I'm, forth th this incessantly is me on any you can't stop moving? Yes. So anytime I do any other stream... I, I like move back and forth because I don't know how to regulate myself and just stop. So we're going to do our best today. I'll try to be calm. We'll do our best. We're You're pretty good. fidgety as it is. Yes. During a normal stream, but maybe your nerves about losing control today are making it worse for you. Way worse. I'm usually still as a statue, so <laughs> I'm, I feel like a cool cucumber There's right actually now. people who it's leave fun. comments that say like, Mary doesn't move. They think move. it's weird that I don't move, but it's only because you're like, you're making up for both of us yes. by moving yeah. constantly. I'll try to, I'll sit like this and yeah. see if this helps. Yeah. We can do this. <laughs> okay, so I'm not gonna do the intro the same way that Brett does. We're literally just going to jump right into it. The first thing is weird food news because Brett, <laughs> Loves I to just force this into the beginning of the show. Doritos is launching a Baja Blast themed bag of chips with their Mountain Dew collab. Oh, it's my fault. Okay, yes. Uh, so fiery mango. I who the hell eats mango chips? Is that a it thing? It sounds disgusting. Kellen, you said somebody eats mango flavored chips I, before. It's a very, like, mango chili is a very popular flavor in the world. <sighs> in the third gross. world. Yes. You forgot to mention that part. We're, we're, it's in the third I mean, world. I'm just saying, like, it, it's not the most absurd flavor I've seen from uh, Lay's and Doritos. <laughs> I've tried the lime flavored Lay's chips and it was awful. It was like salty Fruit Loops. Well, do you like the ketchup chips? Yeah, those are okay. Have you tried the Doritos ketchup chips yet? No. I haven't tried those Wait, yet. there's Doritos ketchup chips? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. in America? I've seen them, yeah. Like, yeah, I can't tell you like where they are right Brett's now, about but it's to like buy a those. new the, thing. But. The ketchup flavored chips here weren't even from America. They were from Canada. I know, and they're not even the good ones. You need the HERS ketchup chips. Those are the ones that are yeah. like, oh, these taste like pickle too much, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I've been eating salt. I, I like salt and pepper chips. Mm. That's Very weird. Good. Just plain That's salt and pepper. I thought your favorite was flavor. the Old Bay. Yeah. I do, okay, oh, so much. No, I do not. I do not eat the Old Bay chips. What I eat is the Old Bay cheese, uh, like cheese puffs. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Except when they get all into your like teeth. Yeah, but uh, in, in there, like you're, by the time you're done, your hands are just gross. Mm, but yeah, Cheeto dust. Um, okay, mm. we're done with that. Baja Blast <laughs> isn't good. It's overrated. I never understood it. I think Kellen said that too. The, the, by the way, yeah, I don't like Baja Blast. Funny that this comes up today because Kellen is like a South Park super fan for mm. some reason. But they put out a Cartman plushie. Apparently, he is a superhero alter ego in the show called... Am I allowed to say this on YouTube? I wouldn't. It's, a, it's a, like a raccoon, like the animal, but without yeah. the rap He's part. He's a raccoon hero. Th there's literally an actress named Carrie Coon. Like, is she just supposed to never say her name live on air? I guess not. Well, okay. We just said it, so I guess we'll there you get go. flagged. I don't know. A lot of these comments, though, are like... I, 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 seems like they haven't watched the show. Because no, literally. Because this character is a very like yeah. integral part of South Park. People are getting offended by this who claim to be South Park fans, but everyone is like, have you seen South Park? I know. Like, yeah, for real. I don't know. It is weird that our generation, like, because South Park was very big. Like, I like it's literally been around for so long that I remember downloading episodes on Kazaa back in the what, day. What is Kazaa? It was like LimeWire. 
Um, and okay. it's been around since I was like in junior high. And it's amazing that the generation that grew up on South Park ended up being the most offended generation. So that's what that's like. It's scary, yeah, you're gonna man. be Brett is getting attacked by the money guns today. Throw the, <laughs> this is me? a new feeling for him. Shit out of here. I don't want that at me. Stop throwing the money. No, do it more. Actually, no, do no, it more. Do not throw the money at me. We need to make Brett uncomfortable. <laughs> But you know, our gener my generation grew up watching South Park and is easily the most offended generation there is right now. I would say that millennials are worse than Gen Z, probably. Would you say South Park's gotten m more I crazy and unhinged over the years, or less? Uh, more topical. Definitely more topical. But yeah. do you think it's just the same level of like, I guess, edginess for lack no, of better words? No, it's not as edgy as it used to be. That's you don't for think sure. So? Getting yeah. rid of Chef was a mistake back in the day. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Chef was awesome. Yep. But I guess you're right. Millennials are like e more easily offended yeah. than Gen Z. But Gen Z gets all of the flack for it. I saw the article that um, Andrea Mew wrote on an EV that said Gen Z thinks that being woke is for ugly people. So maybe nice. that's what it is. Maybe they just don't nice. want to be woke because they don't want to be ugly. Well, they're they're right. Okay. <laughs> Um, O.J. Simpson, his book, If I Did It, is number one on Amazon right now, a bestseller. I just find it so funny that the family got to choose the cover to make the if part yep. the smallest word. Um, oh, is that right? So I guess congrats to, to O.J. Simpson's children I for also, all that royalty money. Yeah, and I <laughs> saw, like, so his lawyer is still working to, like, make sure that he pays out nothing in settlements, like, for civil trials. So he's like, oh. they're going to work to make sure that the Simpson, that Nicole, uh, that the Browns and the Goldmans, uh, uh, Wait, and the Goldmans won't make any money. I don't understand how you can civilly sue someone for murder. He lost, if I remember correctly, he lost the civil suit. He was proven guilty uh, or he was proven, uh, it's not innocent, but he was proven not guilty in the criminal trial, but was found civilly liable because the threshold for evidence is less lower so, is in lower civil... in civil court. Okay, that so. kind of makes sense. He's in hell right now being like, don't pay them out, don't pay you them out. You showed me a skit of, uh, who's that guy on Instagram? Uh, who Carter Anderson. Bitch? Carter Anderson. Yeah, He's OJ in, in hell, just like acquainting himself with everyone. He, hey, he said Oppenheimer was down there. I think there. there was a South Park episode of where, you know, there's a hell party with all like the worst people and he's there, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Stephen Hawking is like, hey. Philosophical <laughs> question, does Oppenheimer end up in hell? Because in the, in the, in the skit, Who am he ended I up to in say? He ended, up, he ended up in hell. Does Oppenheimer end up in hell? Who am I to say? Is he like the, the, is he like the quintessential example of someone who says, I was just following I orders? I glamorized <laughs> Oppenheimer in the last like yeah. decade. I mean, he definitely has always been a notable figure, but yeah. we totally made him a celebrity yeah. in the last, ten, especially with the movie. People stan Oppenheimer now because of the movie? He's, he's a little bit of a celebrity. I mean, yeah, I, I'd say so. I mean, okay. you, 15 years ago, you bring up that name, a lot of people are going to look at you like, they don't know what you're talking about. Wait, like they don't know who he is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I saw this clip from whatever where they asked all the girls on the panel when World War I uh, started and ended and World War II. And all of them got it, like, not just slightly wrong, but, like, way off. They when were like, they... I think World War I started in 1957. Oh like, gosh. it was it was bad. Doo-wop was in and World War I was going on. Like, and what, then, 1917? like, one of them just Something was like honest and was like, I suck dick for a living. I don't know. I don't know when the <laughs> when World War One started. I have no She's idea. Like, You're actually the idiot for asking yeah, me this literally, question. Yeah, literally. Like, she, she actually kind of <laughs> called him out. Yeah. Um, also, Miley Cyrus was trending over the weekend because a fan took a selfie with her and everyone decided to start more millennial aging discourse about it. Someone said, I'm sorry, but this woman is loved by God. All the drugs she's done, all the chaos she's been in, and she's probably the best aging celebrity alongside Beyonce. Like, she can still pass as 20, TBH a senior in any high school Netflix show. She, she I am good. floored. She looks pretty good, especially compared to her sister. Her sister... It's well, very... her sister is messing up her face with plastic surgery, so I don't know if it's a fair but, comparison. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I'm not saying she looks bad or anything, but... It's just weird that they're calling her an aging celebrity when she's only 31. It's because they're basing it on how long she's it's been like, in the industry, like not Beyonce, how long. Beyonce debuted after her, so I guess people just assume that they're in the same generation, but isn't Beyonce in her 40s? Yes. Or she, yeah. So wait, so when did Beyonce debut? Because Destiny's Child was a thing in like the late eight, or late 90s. But like, as a solo artist. As a solo guess, artist, probably in after. 2000 or something but like it's that. Like, like, so like with NFL fans, like if you're 31 in the NFL, you're an old man. Yeah. 
The, you know, like they, it's almost like you're not human anymore. It's kind it's of based like on different. how long you've been doing it, not how old you are. Being yeah, a senior yeah, yeah, yeah. in a high school Netflix show means that you look like you're in your 30s. That's been going on forever, though. Yeah, that's sort that's of. been going on forever. I, I, and up until recently, mm-hmm. now you get like shows with like Jenna Ortega where they actually look the part. Yeah, I mean, if except it, Jenna Ortega, she's, like obviously she's like 22. So isn't she older? I thought she was like 23, 24. She's, she's I mean, in her mid I know 20s. she's younger. But Wait, really? Yeah, uh, look it up. Hold I think on. she I think she's 25 or 26. I could be wrong about that. Jenna Ortega. Uh, and I, that's funny because that came up because I was watching. I watched a movie over the weekend called. The Bricklayer with Aaron Eckhart, uh, which, by the way, everyone should go watch because within the first ten minutes, he literally kills a dude with like a <laughs> what, like a spat, like a yeah, spatula yeah, and, and like cement, and, and like a and like a tape measure oh, that's and cool. uh, and an actual brick. So it's like, what's the opposite <laughs> of false advertising? But Nina Dobrev is in that, and she was in the uh, the originals. And I think of any show like that that's supposed to be like a teen show has the characters that are all like very much older, and they were always like that. Jenna Ortega is twenty one. Is she really? Is she? Yeah. I thought she was yeah. Older. I don't know why you guys thought who, she was in her mid twenties. Maybe because of the role she got. Honestly, Blaine and like, cause like what? She's usually hmm. playing like high school characters and Scream and then. Um... She started on Disney as well. Jennifer Lee yeah. said uh, in reply, beginning to think all the discourse around women in their 30s is due to Gen Z just having yep. absolutely no idea what 30 year old women look like. Miley looks great, but she looks her age at 31. It's just that 31 isn't old. She can't pass for a senior in high school, but she could play one in a movie as 30-year-olds often do. Yeah, I I think I brought that up on the show before. Like, is the fact that we consume so much media that's fed to us with people who look different ages and what they actually are, will that affect the next generation's ability to decide what a teenager yeah. was, what a, what a high school person looks like. Everyone is saying that Gen Z high schoolers are straight up baby mode compared to their prior yeah. generations. Well, like they look like kids. Hard to do hard living it, when you want to get your license. Some people <laughs> said it was the outfits that they wore. Like, so if you look at those old, you know, videos from the nineties of like a, you know, senior class, <laughs> The like haircuts and everything. Haircuts, yeah, I get that. Clothing. But if I, you really look at their faces, that, they really do look more adult in those like home videos of high schoolers in like is? the 90s, the 80s, 90s, 2000s. The microplastics. It's what's ever in the, in, is in the water. It, the, it's turning the frogs gay. It's making Gen Z look mm. like children when they're 18. Well, also like plastic surgery is going to obfuscate like how old somebody looks in general now because well, people are going to be freezing their ages to I was in high whatever sc- they look like when they, you know, stretch their face out. I was in high that. school and I had two girls, at, two, at least two, that got nose jobs while in high school so that's crazy it is crazy was it something they wanted people normal. to know about or would would they like deny it yes and no it's not like did they, they come in with bandages it. no they'd be or it was over the sick. summer they'd be sick from school for a few weeks or that's whatever. crazy yeah, yeah. and that means their parents paid for it which oh, is yeah. wild yeah. like what parent in their right mind I saw so, do I, that. so somebody was describing it to me they said like aging is one of those things where like you don't age uh, incrementally you age all at once so it's like you look f- like if you're 50 you looked 40 until you were 49 and then all of a sudden you turn 50 and then all of a sudden you look sure. that age like it, it never happens in increments like that it also that. depends on like how much in the public eye you are like it's like yeah. when you see your friends and you haven't seen them in a you know four or five years and they're like oh my god like you you know you got a lot older like your parents your relatives will say that to you a lot like oh look how old you've gotten what they haven't seen you in years isn't that rude <laughs> yeah man you look old as hell yeah. still growing up it's well, not older like relatives that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the uh because like for me i have friends who i start like i hadn't seen in years who all look like they put on the years and i'm i'm naive and I'm like but i don't look old but if you were I there the if you were hanging out with them still like yeah. on a weekly basis you wouldn't yeah you're yeah. not gonna notice it like that yep yeah um also everyone remembers that kesha lyric right woke, woke up in the morning feeling like p diddy uh, before we what, what exactly that did she mean by that what the hell does that mean when she made that song it's not like he was relevant oh he was he was relevant in I mean, 2010 been, what the hell was he's he always doing been in, relevant what the hell was he doing in 2010 that was worthy of a song lyric when did that song come out around 2010 around yeah like, what the hell was he doing that was even worth that at why that was time? Kesha no? at Coachella anyway why wh- wh- when did this like wait wasn't there a huge happen? act that dropped out of Coachella last minute I don't know I, don't I forget who it was I thought that was last year like some 
Like Kanye I, was like Kanye dropped out. Well, you like know, they, Coachella is flopping when Vanessa Hudgens can't make it because yeah. she's like the queen of Coachella. Poor Vanessa. Wait, is that a thing? Queen of Coachella? She's Apparently. known as as the queen of Coachella and she didn't go this year. Yeah. She posted I, You know about what it. I was wondering about Coachella is because I see all these videos of like these celebrities just kind of like standing around. I'm like, is that just a thing? Like if you were to go to Coachella, are you just going to be surrounded by like celebrities just hanging out? Yeah, they were making a big deal. They're not like, like VIP sections and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, there are. There was like uh, Justin Bieber went up and like gave a uh, Jaden Smith, Smith like a hug and a, a kiss on the cheek. A little bit of bromance. And they and they kept making it about the kiss as if it was something gay. A little bit of bromance going on. And yeah, there, yeah. There was a few of those. He's like, remember when we made that Karate Kid music video back in 2010? <laughs> I think Coachella is flopping because influencers made it lame. It's like, not about music anymore. Remember, it's about like going and. And taking pictures and yeah and like taking well we had the topic last year where they would like bus in take their photos and then leave exactly or they would <laughs> they would literally like fake being at coachella completely we should do that they would like just photoshop green, or just use like ai to like use ai to fake your coachella Let's pictures the, uh, the cast castle guys give us like a, a fake like a green screen so we can fake coachella <laughs> was last year when there was like the big storm and they all got stuck no, you're thinking of Burning Man? Okay. That was, yeah, that was Burning that's Man what last it was. year. Which Burning Man. Awesome. Which is worse than Coachella yeah. in terms of festivals. I mean, Andrew Tate told us about the festival hose. You got to beware. I like the Simpsons episode where they go to Burning Man because Homer forgets to actually get a <laughs> camping site reserved for Marge. <laughs> my my favorite thing was the Revolve Fest back in 2022. I don't even know what that is. I don't know. We covered oh, that. Oh, yes. Okay, because it's like, it's like It was the fire festival Coachella, of but Coachella. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was going to bring up fire. Yeah, festival. it was a bunch okay. of influencers like stuck in the desert getting like bussed over to this other like adjacent event, but they were like dying of heat exhaustion. And Fire Fest 2 is happening. The guy's bringing it back after what serving yeah. the time. The guy who started it. But Billy McFarland. there was never a first one. Well, I mean, I mean yeah. there was, there, there, was, there, there, was. There, there are cheese sandwiches <laughs> that prove you wrong. There was a fire vest. It, it just wasn't all it was cracked up to be. At fire fest also, one. I was just finishing watching Inventing Anna finally because I had been intending to. Um, and apparently Anna Delvey stayed at Billy McFarlane's apartment when she was like couch surfing. Like they were friends. I don't know who that is. Anna Delvey. No, I know that. I don't know. Billy McFarland was the Firefest guy. Oh, was that his name? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just don't know. I know him as the Firefest guy. Like all of the scammers were friends. Okay. Anyway, Kesha, because P Diddy has fallen out of favor, he's fallen from grace. She has changed that lyric, and changed it to F P Diddy. Uh, when, did, when did this performance happen? Because I saw a tweet from yesterday where she tweeted that lyric change out again. So she's really going hard on this, uh, this you know, the Shakespeare that she's just written. Wake up in the morning feeling like F. P. Diddy. Yeah, she's good. It doesn't work like with the amount. It should of be syllables. wake up in the morning like F. P. Diddy. Makes more sense. F that makes way more like to I say. <laughs> she kind of she kind of looks like Madonna in this photo. To be honest, is that her on the right? Yeah, Renee Rapp was performing. Oh no, with that's her, Renee I guess. Rapp. On the left. That's yeah. Renee Rapp on the left. You can tell by okay, the stomach. Okay, but this is Kesha on Oof. the right. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, know how, you know how I know? Because she's defiantly showing it, which means that it's not worth showing. Mm, yeah. Nobody is more happy to show you like an unattractive stomach than a person with an unattractive stomach. That's what I do. Me and, <laughs> you know, that's what Joe Biden does at the beach. Literally, you know? at, like all like all fat people are like, oh, look, a mid like a midriff. It's, Let's it's go. It's just kind of, you just kind of settle and you're just like, screw it. If I have to look at it every day, then so does yeah. everyone else. At least, at least <laughs> girls will, like a girl will be like, oh, look at this disgusting stomach I have. Here, let everybody in society see it. It's a dad bod, yeah. man, but for girls. <laughs> I was immediately confused about Coachella because they had Frank Ocean as one of the headliners. He's still relevant. He's How? They're mad because they're just upset like, at him for not putting out a new album. But he's exactly. Still, so if you haven't put out any new music, why are you headlining? Like he was headlining. Yeah, he was one of the headlining acts. It makes no Frank sense Ocean's to me. Frank like I don't know. He's one of those artists that. I don't know how often he tours, but I know he still has a ridiculously strong fan base. I suppose, like, yeah. how much, how often do they actually release like new albums? It seems like they release mostly singles these days, anyways. So Frank Ocean hasn't even released singles. He's literally yeah, really? just like he just wanted on to, an unofficial hiatus. He's the one married point. to what's uh, to. Um, He's gay, right? Or who's no? Who's the one? Oh, I'm thinking of John Light, John Legend. Yeah, oh, different yeah. guy. Same thing. Frank Ocean is gay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. 
That's why he got headliner. Um, I didn't list a person. You said it like gay people can't get married. <laughs> I was like, no. he's the one married to. He's gay. You, he can't get married. <laughs> no, you said, to you said like a woman, right? Or did I just not even? I didn't. I, 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 I was thinking of what's her name. Whatever. Uh, but, oh, maybe I said what's her name. You said her what's name. her name. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, Mary's not a bigot. It's it's my fault. Well, I I might be a little <laughs> bit of a bigot, but like we're not gonna address that right now. Um, uh, but you just know that when she like when all this stuff happened, she immediately like her she, she didn't even see it first. Her PR person saw it and said, "God changed lyric, God changed." Lyric. It, you yeah. got like three songs. You better change it. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's probably like her most po popular one too. It is. She's like, uh, she just says the line as it was, and then she's like, "But what does being Diddy mean? Being like Diddy mean anyway?" It's what philosophical. What if it was a TED talk instead of a, per a performance where she just breaks down? She has a TEDx talk. Yeah, at, at yeah Echo She's not worthy of a TED talk. She's. I don't know what the difference is between a TED talk and a TEDx talk. I just know that the TED talk is the the more important one. So she's yes. a TEDx talk person all the way. Yeah, TEDx is like. The unofficial version of so, it. See, I think what happened here is I think Renee Rapp and Kesha's shirts in the cost in the wardrobe department. I think they got switched. Oh. I think I think Renee Rapp was supposed to wear the white shirt. Yeah, yeah, doesn't seem like it I've never heard Kesha of her either. Well. She was in the New Mean Girls. I didn't watch that. The good You're lucky. That was, that's <laughs> you good. I didn't watch have. the original either. That's good. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you should watch the original. Uh, it is worth watching. Um, we'll see. But they butchered we'll it see. badly. But, uh, um, we're yeah. going to talk about Avatar The Last Airbender now because uh, they have a new animated Avatar The Last Airbender movie in the works and they have cast the voice actress for Toph. For context, if you haven't seen it, the character of Toph is blind and she is an earthbender and she basically uses ultrasonic waves to see people. Um, but they decided that because representation matters so much, they needed to cast not only a blind voice actress, but she also has to be Asian because Toph's character is Asian. Um, they, her name is Diana Kwan, and she is legally blind, known for her roles including Kimmy from Rugrats and Trixie Tang. So she's a, she's a well-known voice actress. Yeah, she's not like a nobody. I get it. That but doesn't bother me as much. If she's if she's actually got a resume, yes. that's fine. You know what yes. they say when you lose one of your senses, like your other senses become heightened? So I think maybe, that's only Daredevil so that says that. Maybe she's got like such control over her voice acting, you know, because she's blind. So it's, it's actually sure. a good thing. Yeah, yeah sure is right. It's, it's actually a really good thing. Look, you just got to think outside the box. I'm though. not saying that she shouldn't have gotten the job. Really, like obviously she is well known, but why is it necessary to cast a blind voice actor for a blind character? Because they want why other does it matter? That's because because they want other blind people to be able to see themselves in her. They want to feel seen. <laughs> That's not even the problem, though. It's the problem's not even casting her. The problem is this PR tour of bragging about it. I think that's the bigger issue. Yep. Is look at us. Look, you know, look how sensitive we are. I say that all the time. Like they've they've been doing this and so I went and saw I went and saw the it. the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare over the weekend because I was not going to see Civil War because I just I don't care about Civil War. Uh, and in the movie there's a, a character named Heron who's uh he's a, the movie is based on like a very real uh, special forces mission from the SAS called Operation Postmark back at, during World War II. And there's like a character named Heron in there and then there's a whole other bunch of characters that were very clearly added in there that were not real to what actually happened because what actually happened, you know, it was 19, you know, 45 or whatever when this happened and, uh, or whatever year it happened. And, uh, they added a bunch of diversity and I pointed out, I said, look, back in the day, they would have done this in movies all the time and they would have never had a problem with it because they would have gotten a well-known actor and the guy who they got in this movie, who I, I don't remember his name offhand, he's fantastic. But then they continued to add more and more characters, which is the part that's like speaks to divert like you just knew that this was a studio note that they're like yeah, checking boxes yeah we need to have this much of this otherwise you're not going to get the funding to get this movie made feel like it's um but back in the day they wouldn't you just wouldn't have read because of the internet you wouldn't have the the lack of internet you wouldn't have had the ten thousand articles with people patting themselves on the back saying yeah. we did this in this movie plus you get a good actor and you don't have to worry it's as like, much that people are going to have a problem it's like with if it. you're a purchaser at a grocery store and you're like damn we, we just we ordered way too much pasta <laughs> 
we gotta we gotta make sure we gotta <laughs> make sure we get some chicken in here you yeah. know it's like they're they're checking the boxes and they're, they're making it like a science when it's just like get the best man for the job you know i'm worried about is they're going to ruin toff's character because she's known for having her, like a good sense of humor and they made plenty of jokes if, related to her blindness in the show right. but you're not allowed to make jokes that even think, mention disability or race or anything anymore i'm gonna hope that she's got a good sense of humor about it and honestly trixie tang wasn't she like a more jovial character in fairly odd parents i mean yeah it was a funnier show i guess but like it's gonna they be the already, writer. it's gonna be on the writers it's not gonna they be already like presented an like an aged up version of Toph in Legend of Korra where she just didn't have a sense of humor anymore. So they already kind of yeah. ruined the character. And I don't know, like I'm not saying it's this is the wrong way to hire someone, but some people do think it's creepy and not necessary. In the show Covert Affairs, the character of Augie makes jokes about him himself being blind all the time. Yeah. Like it's one of the the number one things that he does is to cha- you know, make situations more jovial or less awkward by poking fun at his own disability and that was an actual seeing actor Mm -hmm. uh christopher gorham who didn't actually have the disability and they wouldn't allow that to happen these days and that's sad because it almost always endears an audience to you when you can poke fun of yourself why are they reading why are they doing this movie again? Didn't the show They, they already... have a whole like slate of content for the next decade related to is it... Avatar the Last Airbender. Like it's they're really milking it for all it's worth and more. Hmm. And I don't know. So is this have supposed to like hopes. pick up after the last season of the original Avatar the Last Airbender? I don't even know what their timeline is anymore, actually. Like, cause obviously Legend of Korra was quite a while after the first show. But yeah, they're doing live action. Everything has to have a live action adaptation. Everything needs a spinoff. Everything needs a sequel. Like I, I did see like an unofficial timeline set up where they have like ten different movies planned already, even though they didn't even know whether the Netflix the last, show like, was going to do well. Projects flopped. The, after the, Korra. the Netflix show was terrible. It was terrible. Which and one? Oh well, they had a movie first. Which... The M Night Shyamalan movie. Everyone hated that. But the the live action Netflix show, I mean, I didn't watch the whole thing, I'll be honest, but it was just not good enough to continue. And I didn't even see people talking about it for like it wasn't it wasn't a moment. It. it didn't have its moment for sure. I also saw some discourse about this uh, after the initial announcement related to the voice actor for Apu being white. Mm hmm. Someone said, the people who whined about Apu should have been beaten with sticks for what they turned voice acting into. And someone replied, the people who whined about Apu were actual Indians who were bullied as children because of actual harmful stereotypes. And the only ones who did the unnecessary crying were F-ups like you who probably took part in said bullying. The only stereotype is that Apu was an extremely successful businessman and immigrant and family man he had eight exactly. kids it's literally a positive stereotype it's, but it's, because he has an accent it's offensive like come on but they now. did that to uh, family guy too but i think they took it upon themselves but that's one of the problems right so so the, the issue here is that a lot of people would be like okay it's fine as long as he has an americanized voice but that's completely disregarding what actually happens when you are a first you know when you're an off the boat immigrant who just got here sure. you're not going to sound american and that is not a bad thing you just took somebody who doesn't sound american and put them in the genre of comedy which isn't a bad thing but if you look at everything and if all you're looking for is something to be offended by then you're gonna find it it makes no sense whatsoever yeah someone pointed out it was one insecure guy most actual indians didn't care even his parents who were actual immigrants didn't care and told him he had a poo hair one whining idiot has ruined the voice acting industry the only good thing that could come from it is if english dub actors were fired and they showed that this guy made a documentary about how offended he was by the Apu character in The Simpsons. A documentary about going head to head with a stereotype called The Problem well, with Apu. The problem is if, if victimhood was a stock you could buy, it would be more valuable than Apple and Google and Tesla right now. That's the issue. People know they can cash in on being a victim right now. And we've gotten better in the last year or two, but it's still very much like a thing you can do to easily just put yourself on the radar especially if you make waves enough the same thing happened in 2020 when they recast uh cleveland brown mm. yeah yeah i just think every character in the simpsons or any other comedy 
cartoon is going to be a trope regardless. I mean, Homer is a trope of the bumbling idiot husband, right? Yes, but... That's offensive, but, but no one cared. Yeah, yeah, but there, that's because uh, he's yellow and not white, therefore... Uh, oh, <laughs> that, well, that changes everything. Yes, that, that changes everything. Also, we all understand that you're allowed to punch up but not down and they see yeah. this as punching down and it's also a bunch of people that are unbelievably sensitive about this stuff it's it's stupid but the a lot of the voice actors were really upset about this because after apu it became like all sorts of characters were getting recast for this exact reason but apparently uh you know even though voice acting is supposed to be the only role in entertainment where your your appearance doesn't matter mm -hmm. it has to matter now um i want I want Chris Rock to voice me. If I if there's an animated movie made about me, I want Chris Rock to Meanwhile, voice me. Meanwhile, we're like here joking about how they should cast Trump as a black da black guy in in the Trump movie. Like, yes. and we would actually find it funny. So, anyway, that's time for cringe or cute of the day. Oh, uh, okay. So who wants to who wants to? Choose? I get to choose today. You get to I'm choose. The, okay. Uh, let's uh, we'll 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 stay classic. Go with cringe of the day because I haven't seen this one yet. All right, uh, so we have here from Censored Men. The baby's more mature than the father. Make this full this screen. made me want to die. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Shrimp Alfredo extra. I'm going to eat. We got a pizza with some french fries for the little one. Do it. Do it. Do like cheese? Yes. No. Say when. <laughs> cheese on the other one? Say when. <laughs> Cheese on the pizza? No? Okay. All right, guys, enjoy your meals. Hey, Sally. Yeah. Is he just squeaking? You know what it is? It's the, it's the hellscape version of that one we watched that one time where, like, the, the family takes their dad to Olive Garden for the first time, and they have all the free breadsticks and, and uh, salad, and he keeps getting... Have you ever seen that one? No. We watched it on here. It's like taking my father, who's never been to Olive Garden... Uh, and he's like, the breadsticks are free. And then he just keeps getting more breadsticks. He's just really excited about it. It's really wholesome. Okay, this is not wholesome. No, this, is I, the, this is the hellscape version. I'm the daughter in this, in this clip. I'm, I'm cringing. <laughs> like, literally, the, how is your three-year-old daughter... More. It's not, but that's not the problem here. It's the, it's the other parents who are of actually adult age that can under comprehend what's going on who are all having really bad secondhand embarrassment right now. I've seen other, it's mainly millennials filming these videos. Like this, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this chick at IHOP where she's like doing a little dance while she gets served the pancakes and this chick at the other booth is staring at her like, what the F is wrong with you? <laughs> like, as you should, these people he's should be shamed. shamed. I'm honestly concerned that he's like having an episode. Like, he's... Uh, there's something going on. Like you should be kicked yeah, out for acting like so that. Like she's so concerned, look, look. look and the, wait, the, wait, the wait, baby's, wait, wait for it. the well, baby's I mean, also- That's there. just addicted yeah, look, to look making content. She's so upset. Who she's is like, filming first all, this? First of all, he's feeding himself before his kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you just asked the right question. Like, why is it being filmed Who anyways? Who is the person they're, they're standing, which yeah. means they were standing right next to the waiter. Like, I, like I, if I were the waiter, I literally would just not serve. Like, the, the waiter is, like, like, elbowing I'm not going to be a to... cast member in your weird TikTok. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, you know, a couple weeks ago, they had that the weird, like, millennial videos going viral about, like, the... Um, oh, I don't even know how to describe it, where they use, like, the... They're just weird, and they're like, uh, they use the, the weird language, and it's really cringy. Well, that's what I'm wondering. You mean if like the quirky yes, girl? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The quirky language. girl stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's. Pokes you, you. Pokes you, that stuff. I'm wondering if that's what this is. It's some kind of like subgenre of that. I mean, like, he looks younger than millennial. I, I, I feel like he could be a Gen Z. Honestly, -er, I, I don't know if that's a woman or a man. I'm I thought you kind said of, it was a dude. I, thought I, it was I don't a dude. even know anymore. I don't even know. I know who it is. It's Juliet from the Romeo and Juliet play. Yeah, That's yeah, it it's actually. I love the face on the dash. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're all feeling. Honestly, the only thing saving it is like uh, the 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 ear, like the ears that the daughter's wearing makes her look a little bit more comical. Otherwise, she'd look like the adult in this if, if they took the ears. <laughs> off. I really can't get over the fact that he's not even fixing the daughter a plate. Yep. That's why she's mad. Uh, oh. Okay. I we need to see too. cute next. All right. So I think we have cute. Two cutes, we right, Red? Pets. If I'm not mistaken. Yep, let's show, uh, show two. Go to the cute of the day folder. All right. Yes! So from Cookie Dawn, we have having her tortilla. Okay, I thought this puppy. was a dog eating a cookie. 
<laughs> like, I don't it know if they're supposed a, to have that. It could cute. Be a cookie. It's a tortilla. Cute. Cats do like tortillas, apparently. Like, cats and dogs do like tortillas. Yeah, like Taco Bell. Yeah. There's like a dog on the. Uh, it's like their mascot, right? Oh, the I Taco thought they Bell got rid dog. of it. I don't think they use him anymore. They got rid oh. of the Chihuahua because it's culturally insensitive. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, I bet he loved quesadillas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then the second one we have is oh! from Eddie Armand. 76. I heard Pop Culture Show was on some cute pet, so here's Dolly being a goober. Sometimes he actually watches the show with me. He tends to like episodes with Phil. I think it's the voice. Anyway, have a great show. Look at this fatty. <laughs> <laughs> who, who sits like that? That is amazing. It's kind of a Rorschach test. That's how Joe Biden sits at the beach. It does. Uh, it, does it looks like there's a, his, the white hair looks like a rabbit inside of him. Aww, here's Aww. the second photo. Very cute. That is very cute. Uh, guys, if you're going to submit, uh, hashtag Q, uh, PCC Pets, tag me or the show, uh, uh, specifically tag me in it, because sometimes I forget to check just the hashtag. So at Brett Dasovic and then hashtag PCC Pets. I don't care if there's also people from a pet adoption agency that use the hashtag. We took it. It's ours now. Okay. We're actually making good time today. We're 35 minutes into the show. <laughs> so let's get started. Alan Richson is currently on a tirade, basically, against his own fan base because as the star of Reacher, I would assume most of his fan base is probably right-leaning guys uh, who were in their... 30s to 40s. There were whole ar articles written when Reacher came out about it being dad TV. Yeah. It's well, we all know what the demographic is for dad TV. It's the same yeah. thing that Chris Pratt got written about him when he did the show The Terminalist. So that's literally what's happening. Chris, Mar Chris Pratt is just smart enough to not say anything. Yeah. I mean, Alan Richson is kind of on the come up right now. And I think that he's being excessively outspoken about his left wing political views in order to break into the, the B or the A list right now. Yep. He was just in the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare with Henry Cavill. He's trying to get to that level. He's in the Fast and the Furious 10 this But year. in order to do that, you have to make certain statements. You have to make certain concessions. And it just seems like he's on the warpath trying to alienate the people who like him i don't think it's i don't i don't think it is necessarily that he has to because if that was true chris pratt wouldn't be as famous as he is i he think that's a lot of hate though i yeah like, but, he, but he's lot. but he's fine with it i think that i don't think that these are statements that he's making just because he wants to get famous i think he actually believes them and he didn't realize that being in the show reacher was going to pigeonhole him and people were going to assume what his views were by the fact that he wasn't saying anything and he started in the show yeah and this is all from his recent interview with the hollywood reporter which there was, you know, some talk about normal stuff like career and entertainment industry stuff, but a lot of it he used as a platform to talk about his political views, um, mainly trashing cops, uh, trashing Trump supporters, and calling the, Trump a an R wordist, and the um, Catholic Church, and also trashing the Catholic Church because he is a Protestant Christian and feels very self righteous about that. This is what happens when you're in Hollywood. Like if yeah. you're in Italy. All you're gonna know is Italian food, right? So th this is this is what Hollywood lives and breeds. That everyone's oppressors, mm -hmm. all right? And there, there's all these lies. They don't look at statistics and data, right? There's always there's always these generalizations. And this he's just fall the latest victim to you know yeah. to, to fall into I mean, is, it. Is I mean, what I he just... said about Trump actionable is like a lawsuit because he like he just said it. Like he went out there well, and just Trump, said it. Trump had to pay a settlement to E. Jean Carroll, right? But that was yeah. Like does make does paying that out in a civil case? That doesn't I don't know. make him guilty of what he was yeah. accused of doing. So um, he was recently praised by this account for Occupy Democrats for his comments. Mm, love them. Hollywood yeah. superstar Alan Richson of Reacher fame tears into Donald Trump with the most brutal celebrity attack to date and cites his own Christian faith as a reason. Like the worst type of leftist is the one who uses Christianity to justify their views. Um, here's what he yet. said. Trump is a rapist and a con man, and yet the entire Christian church seems to treat him like he's their poster child, and it's unreal. I don't understand it. Christians today have become the most vitriolic tribe. It's so antithetical to what Jesus was calling us to be and do. In the same interview, Richson tore into police officers who killed the innocent black woman, Breonna Taylor, during a raid. 
That's a tragic case. Cops get away with murder all the time, and the fact that we can't really hold them accountable for their improprieties is disturbing That's to me. That's not even true, though. I mean, you shouldn't have to spend more time getting an education as a hairstylist than as a cop who's armed with a deadly weapon. It takes real courage to tell the truth during such polarized times. Richson should be commended for speaking out. Democracy is on the line. Uh, remember, every election is the most important election of our lifetime. He has a tweet. Again, I still have no idea if this is a real account or not. But if you go to his Twitter, which he has recently scrubbed and he's got like his, his uh, he's basically starting from scratch. He says, hey, folks, I've been seeing a lot of chatter about people saying they won't watch Reacher anymore because of something I did or said. Look, I get it, but let's put, put some things into perspective here. Am I supposed to prioritize my job over my personal beliefs? It's, it's, I feel like I've been sent back in time to 2016, right before the election, and then it's going to get worse right up into 2018. You know, you have Ghostbusters 2016, and then from there it gets worse, and the TDS gets worse, and the cancel culture gets worse all the way up through 2018 are there even any celebrities that are like i can think of like this it's like the same five or six it's like rob reiner uh mark ruffalo it's the same people michael rapaport and michael rapaport it's the same and even he's on the fence now because he doesn't like biden's stance on on israel well he was but, like i was wrong I but the it. the point is is like i feel like i've been sent back in time with this like this isn't relevant anymore i think that what he is saying like it would make sense if uh he were anything but an entertainer i guess like yeah ron perlman thank he's you he's saying am chat. i supposed to prioritize my job over my personal beliefs yes like as an entertainer you should be prioritizing your job as an entertainer over voicing your personal beliefs that are in active contradiction to, with your target audience you have to understand that they they believe the exact opposite you are living in a different world than them right so like they believe and i think it's partially due to like this there is no work life balance anymore it's all one you are what you work and everything's just combined they think that your job needs to reflect on everything about you. There is no going in, clocking out, and then having your own personal life. That doesn't exist for these people. It is a completely different world they're living in. Yeah. He also has this one. Again, uh, I would love somebody to fact check me and tell me if this is a real account because it's not. Uh, it, it definitely okay. seems like so it's it says, a real account. My ex account went through a major cleanse recently, lost a bunch of followers about a week back, but gained 5,000 new ones since then. Feels good to know that my followers are quality people with a positive mindset, folks who aren't afraid to confront their truth head on and own it. Um, what that tells Fair me truth. is that you who unfollow, like, you know, he gets to spew venom. He gets to say a bunch of stuff that's politically expedient for him that's extremely polarizing. And then if you say something back, you're the bad guy. That's cry bully to me. Yeah. He continued that thread saying, the worst accusation thrown at me is that you won't watch Reacher anymore. That's not an accusation. But come on, let's keep it real. If you're claiming to make morally sound choices, start by being honest. Don't trade one form of wrongdoing for another. Remember, being a killer who doesn't steal doesn't automatically make you better than a thief. What does that mean? So, so do you guys think this is his Twitter account, though? Because he got community noted. Uh, if you scroll up. I think it's real because all of these tweets don't read as a troll and... I mean, he said, apparently he confirmed on Instagram that he does not have Twitter. Is that true? Like, when, no, when, no when did he that claim was, that, that was, he didn't that have Twitter? That was five hours ago. He put a post about his ex account going through a major cleanse recently. Yeah. And uh, also, I think that if he you're. He posted on in his verified Instagram says, I do not have a Twitter slash ex account. But when when did he say that he doesn't have an ex account? Like, that's confusing. That was and, three hours ago. And that doesn't matter here because this says he joined in January 24. Even leaving this stuff out, it doesn't matter. The mm. articles are real right, and right. the interview sure, is real. That's sure. not the point. The point point is is that what he's doing by trying to change his audience inherently is going to backfire he has a movie coming out this weekend 
he literally has a movie coming out this weekend, and all the headlines are political nonsense. Nobody's talking about the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, but that, you should go see it. I wonder if that's part of it, though. You know, like in, in part of his contract is, hey, in the lead up to this movie, you need to make X, Y, and Z statements. You get to decide, I guess. What kind Guy Ritchie of, isn't know? even American. I don't see why he'd care about. What, oh, what? that doesn't stop people from piling on J.K. Rowling that are American. No, I'm saying that the guy making the movie. I don't. I don't see how this benefits the movie. Because They're not talking about the movie. Man. That's what and the interview was called. done before. You know, the, there's not even to say that they knew that this interview was going to come out this weekend. Like that could, could have just been when they had it in the queue. I just. It feels to me like right now he's feeling the burden, and and this is to his credit. Small credit, when you do make a certain type of show and you don't speak out, you will get pigeonholed. And then if he doesn't hold those views, he didn't find an artful way of, of getting his stuff out there. He's just spewing a bunch of nonsense that's upsetting people. Now, if people care enough to stop following the show, I get it. Like, it's not going to stop me from watching the stuff that he makes that doesn't bother me. But you, he can't be mad if nobody comes back for Reacher season three. But he's three. acting like you're doing something yeah. morally wrong by not watching Reacher yeah. anymore because or, you don't like him. Like, you're the one who alienated people exactly you won't have only yourself to blame and that is if these are real genuine posts from him i i don't know i don't know but another post from this account says hey everyone just wanted to touch base on something that's been on my mind i shared my personal opinion about someone meaning Trump, and it seems like it caused quite a stir. I've noticed a significant drop in followers and an influx of comments, some of which have been pretty hateful. This kind of toxicity is one of the reasons I'm not as active on X as I used to be. That being said, I'm not planning on disappearing anytime soon. I might just stick around and see how things unfold. Bring it on, yawn emoji. <laughs> Probably it's, it's a fake like, account. Is this a troll? I think it's, I think like, it's a I very like well done troll. if it were a troll, yeah, if it's a troll, then it's a really well done troll. Yeah. Um, I hope this is, isn't his real account, but I feel like what he said publicly in that interview is bad enough. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the, <laughs> right. the tweets are immaterial. The stuff that he yeah. said in the interview is automatically dismissive. Yeah, they're just of that same sentiment, you know? Yeah. So if, they, if it is a fake Twitter, they're doing a really good job of capturing, you know, the, that the spirit of what he's exactly. saying. And also Breitbart pointed out that back in um, 2020, he posted a selfie with his dog where he's wearing this shirt that says, arrest the cops who killed Breonna Taylor. Look, when was like, that you said? When? In 2020, like okay. Summer of Love. As a dude who's politically, uh, him being politically left, like he probably, he gets this breakout role. He's really excited about it. And then he starts seeing the sentiment of everyone online. And you know how, we all know how conservatives get when somebody manages to say one thing that doesn't offend them and stars in something they like. They're like, that's our guy. Yeah. So this guy got boxed into a corner. He didn't want to be boxed into a corner and he didn't know how to get himself out except for to say all the political views that he probably knows deep down are not exactly smart for him to share if he wants to continue with that fan base. But at that point, it won't matter because if he's going on to movies, if he's working with Guy Ritchie, he's in the Fast and the Furious franchise, he's going to keep getting roles, he'll probably end up being fine. Reacher will suffer. The rest of his work won't matter because he'll go to big budget films and the normies don't care. They won't know that this is going on. I think part of the reason that he might have gotten or felt pigeonholed or put in a corner politically that people aren't recognizing mm -hmm. is that he is a blonde haired, blue eyed, muscular, masculine looking white guy. And all of those things, although those are positive things, especially not being a fat slob, those are right wing coded now. Like people talk about how working out and lifting weights is actually crypto fascist. <laughs> like it, He's like, well, it, no, you know what it is? So in order to exonerate himself of being a crypto fascist for being a muscular white guy and being masculine and having an ounce of testosterone in his body is to say stupid things like this. Yeah, and you know what it is? It's like he was on, he was on um, 
team, like the Titans TV show, but it's like, you can be muscular and, and look like you're on steroids, but only if you're in a superhero movie. And since he's not in a superhero movie, he has to have an excuse as to why he looks the way he does. Can you believe that we're at that point where you need to have an excuse or a defense for why you're for not, being in shape, <laughs> why you're not fat in 2024? It like, is really funny sad. too. Cause in the, in the movie, he's like, he's so much bigger than everybody else on like, it's, it's comical. Yeah. Like even then Henry, even Henry Cavill, Cavill. Yeah. Yeah. He wow. dwarfs Henry Cavill. Really? Um, um, like height wise too like I, I mean it's just if you look at him his arms are just gigantic and Henry Cavill spends most of the movie in a coat um, you were ranting about ungentlemanly warfare so I, I want you to tell everyone what you thought what was my oh okay so <laughs> I liked it I had a lot of fun it's it's very Guy Ritchie a little bit toned down it felt like if they had uh, I, I think it's a PG-13 if they'd given it the R rating they could have taken the cuffs off a little bit but if you've never heard the word Nazi you will have heard it 999,999 times by the time the movie is over because it said literally every third sentence is the word Nazi because it's about trying to take out Nazi U-boats and you want to and you want to go against Nazis and Nazi this and Nazi that it felt like a studio note like they were required to say it a certain amount of times but I had a lot of fun with it uh, I I do think it's worth seeing. I did not see Civil War this weekend, but it's enjoyable. It, it is really funny at the end because they show the the actual like servicemen who were part of um, Operation Postmark. And they're all just very normal, you know, because they're just normal looking dudes in the 40s. And then you see the actress who play them. And then you get to the actress uh, who plays the, um, the the girl. It's it's Isaac Gonzalez. And then uh, the character, I think, what is her name? Margaret or whatever. Margaret Qualley? <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember the, the lady's name, but uh, th she's just so normal looking. And Isaac Gonzalez is the most 21st century looking woman you've ever seen with the fake lips and the plastic surgery. With that, like adding all of these women with plastic surgery and fillers and periods. Pieces. It doesn't work. Just stop. Like it, with the yeah, everything. There's a really funny scene where like she's uh, so she's basically her job is to to honeypot like a, a Nazi officer, and uh, so she's trying to get him out of uh, his workspace and like distract him while they're on this mission. And they go to this costume party, and she is wearing something that you wouldn't, no woman would be allowed to wear in the <laughs> 1940s. She just wouldn't. But you know, we got a twenty dollar style from Pat the Plumber. He said, as a Reacher reader, I was pumped when. Richin got the role because he was awesome as Hawk in DC's Titans. Luckily, the show has already gotten worse. I don't know why celebrities have to open their mouths. And I'm I'm gonna be honest. To, like, but... so somebody somebody sent me a message with a link to like one of these articles over the weekend and said like like sorry. I think Corey Anderson. Sorry for your loss. I, I think Corey Anderson said that. I said, what do you think? So it doesn't bother me. Like, this does not stop me from enjoying sure. whatever entertainment he makes. Well, uh, and then another person was like, that's because, like, basically you're a coward for, like, so me, no. what? So, okay. like, okay, so. I mean, if we're talking about their political views, sure, right? But your phone is made with slave labor. Do you boycott your cell phone if you if you can't have a phone? That would, that would inconvenience people. Yes. Too much. So the the point is, is that the world is infinitely more complicated than that, and our job is literally to critique and watch things in pop culture. And, so. And I was going to say, these actors are allowed to have opinions, but I'm also allowed to then react to those opinions exactly. and decide if I'm going to continue watching a show or not. He yeah. can't count on everybody being like us where our job is to watch it and talk about it right. therefore consume it right uh, other people have a right say look i only have so much time in the day i work all day i come yeah. home i don't want to watch something with somebody that says shit that pisses me off and that's not my value system but i get it your brain is actually designed to be surface level for a lot of things and if you see something that you know upsets you you can just you're just not you don't want anything to do with that thing you're not going to pay that much sure. attention to it you're just going to cast it off to the side so he really can't be upset when he like he's making not inflammatory statements but they're strong statements and it's like if it rubs someone the wrong way yeah they're gonna react to it i just laugh because it felt like i'd been transported back in time i was like is trump even that relevant i mean I, it's a it's an election year yeah. like i do understand why he felt uh it was fitting instead i want an actor to go the the opposite direction i want somebody to start campaigning hard for fetterman 2024 because mm. that's what i really really want i want john fetterman <laughs> to to become the president Fetty. so i need uh is there a are there any he's from pennsylvania right yeah are there any famous actors from pennsylvania i want somebody from hollywood to start campaigning for fetterman because that's who i'm that's who i've got who's got my vote we'll see we'll see he's uh he's getting quite the not to get into this fetterman uh road but he's getting a lot of pushback because he's supporting israel right now and it's just yeah i think also 
even more so than him being because his comments about the the catholic church were like they they they're associated with uh with pedos and i can't abide i'm like you're in hollywood which is literally infested with the with yeah. the with pedos but the point is is i think he's actually trying to distance himself from the idea of traditional Catholicism because a lot of people aren't going to make the distinction between Protestant and Catholic. So his what? comments, uh, I think that when people see that he's religious, Hollywood people, Christian Hollywood gets, yeah, people Christian doesn't want to do a huge bag. P yes. That's so crazy. people in Hollywood do not like Catholicism as we I talk mean, yeah. about all the time. So he has to make these comments to get himself away from being called. I mean, religious. That's just so bizarre to me because you know, his American audience, um, if any of them are Christian, most of them would be Protestant. Most American mm -hmm. Christians, like by far, are Protestant. So I don't know why it would be different for Hollywood that they would immediately assume Christian equals Catholic. Like that's because well, people are dumb. Quite I, odd. Well, I think I think I, I think you're right, Brett, with like kind of the pushback against Catholicism. But I think for most people. They, there is no difference. They see Christianity. Christianity, Christianity is Christianity. Is Christianity. I, I just think it's so funny that, that someone would possibly hate Alan Richson so much because of what he said in this interview that they would create a fake sock account oh, it's impersonating really him. But it's not even, say, that's what's funny. Like, it's like annoying but extremely nuanced leftist takes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whoever you are out there. It could be someone that he like, this works account. with. Like, like, it could be someone posting on his behalf. I literally have no idea. Well, but if he it says it's not his account, then I guess it's not his account. It's against XTOS to impersonate a public mm -hmm. figure. So there's going to get banned Can if it's fake. Can you impersonate yourself after, after you said, oh, this is not <laughs> Well, he's me, bipolar. Me. So maybe like he has a personality oh, when he's doing it one way. He has then, a split personality. Yeah. One loves Trump and Somebody one hates Trump. Somebody said Zachary Quinto or Quinto. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, he's from Pennsylvania. Hmm. Somebody oh, said Kat Denning go, is hot. I have no idea what they're talking about, but she's about to star in a show with Tim Allen, like a comedy where she plays like Tim Allen's daughter huh. um, and comes Tim back Allen to live now? with him. Yeah. How is that old, like how old a. Is he nowadays? Is that a reboot? It's like, no, no, it's a new show. It's going to be on oh. ABC. Okay. Really? Yep. Huh. Uh, let's go to Super Chats. Let's do it. Andrew Jacobs said, Happy birthday to the most successful failed musician and my favorite anti communist and counter revolutionary, Mr. Phil Labonte. Hail Mary and Happy hi, birthday, Brett. Phil. Happy birthday, Phil, if you're watching this. Hello. Oh, he is. Didn't know. We know. We know he is. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, Happy Monday, Brett and Mary. 10 episodes till 600. The only hint I can give for my 600 video is that you better put on your dancing shoes. I don't dance. That's I mean, I, we dance. That's not uh, true. You dance. The we other dance day. during crisis parties. Let's get yeah. a crisis party so we can dance. I want to dance from this chair. I guess episode six hundred yeah, that, that is on Monday. That wasn't part of the training. Dancing. You, your dancing's optional for you. Wait, wait. Episode six hundred isn't on Monday. It's on um, Wednesday, right? Next week. We don't know because you didn't say the episode what? number. No. I guess know. I just know. messed up our count. Be. We don't know what episode it is. Wait, yeah, it's ten more. Yeah, it would be Monday. It's nine two, more two episodes. Two Mondays from now. Math not, class is hard. Not because it's not. It's five ninety today, so it'd be five ninety five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I got confused because we were like two stressing weeks. over it not being on a Friday. <laughs> Brett Dasovic <laughs> said today's guest is mid. Um, Hel hella mid. I will not have this slander posted in the chat. Look, guys, I'm <laughs> I am uh, I'm pretty humble, so I, it's okay. I'm okay with being mid. TCNC said, Kellen, we got a secret plan for Mocha live in studio. Next time Brett is at the transition clinic, let's go. <laughs> there will be none of that. And if I come back here and there's the stench of that disgusting cat in here, uh, the show oh. is canceled. So no comment oh. on you being at the transition clinic. Uh, can't we just like, I'll leave that up to your guys' imagination. Can we just like strap him into the chair so he can't like escape? Oh, will it hurt him? Then no, no. no, no I, we're not gonna hurt him. Don't do that. Are we misgendering the cat? It's right it's a now? it's a girl. Mocha's a girl. Mocha's a girl. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that matters, but we misgendered a cat. My bad. <laughs> Evan Perry said Kellen graduated from the cuck chair. That's Congrats, right. Kellen. Thank you. How's Thank it you. feel? It's right over there. Cuck, the know. cuck chair is I, I, I vacant. It. I left it there because, <laughs> like, after the show, I have to do like all the the numbering for like segments, and it's like I always have to like get up, come back here, get over there. I'm like, oh, I could just use this as like a as a desk now. I, it's it's calling to me. Hmm? You know, I think it misses me. Um, Shane H. Wilder said, "You got this, Kellen. If Thank not, you. Mary will beat you." Yeah, that that I didn't let you know about that well, either. 
she already did earlier, so it's okay. That's why I've been pretty lies. good today. <laughs> lies. Lies. Slander and lies. <laughs> DCNC said you didn't say the episode number yet. Jeez. Oof. See, these are the type of things I was wondering. Like, do people really even notice whether we talk about or whether we mention the episode number Listen, or things like that? I have it written like down right here, but I'm not allowed to say it. Okay. We'll just keep it secret. Because I know, I know it's it really is. upset Brett. <laughs> it would upset me no i'm completely fine i think letting the audience know the episode number is fair and, and smart is the anxiety kind I of i think it's in the title oh yeah i'm good fading i'm fading now sure it's in the title I'm anyway good. okay no diggity 247 said mom and dad what are you doing i'm scared i don't think this is my home jk this is gonna be fun let's go this is uh it is weird to sit here and not be <laughs> well you have to um Move your head back and forth. To, yes. To uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to get home like, ah, oh, my freaking neck. Yeah. Ow. Just uh, be careful. Like Jojo Siwa, I'm going to say the F word. Okay. Oh, Let's get oh. into our next topic. Let's go. Lana Del Rey recently performed at, Ch at Coachella, and a lot of people were mentioning her dramatic weight loss. And congrats to her. I tweeted about this. Uh, I said, Lana is skinny again. We are so back. Nature is healing. Uh, I think that this is great for morale, especially as World War III is about to kick off. I think we needed this. Uh, this is good for society in general, but especially for Lana stands. And I- For her health. I've been questioned in my, uh, my, st like, like my stand status for Lana for saying this. Aww. They're saying I'm a fake stand because if I didn't support her when she was fat, then I must be a fake stan. Well, it's true. If you can't handle me at my lupus overweight, then you don't deserve me at my Ozempic underweight. That's true. And everyone was saying that she must have been Ozempic maxing before Coachella because I got to be honest, the weight loss was pretty dramatic in only a span of a few Maybe months. Maybe she's using it as inspiration for her music. Yeah. And, and her upcoming album, her country album. It's like, oh, I came back from the depths. You yeah. Know, no also, than ever. <laughs> Kino Corner commented and said, saw that. real fans stuck by her regardless of her weight. And I said, true, but we needed this to boost morale. And I stand by that. And then it was funny. He like tweeted about it later on and said, it's so funny how I'm getting hate for this when I just, I don't even follow Lana. <laughs> like he's just getting involved. What for, are the for stands fun. called? The Lana stands? Yeah. Well, some of them call themselves Lanitas. Is she Hispanic? Um, that sounds like a Hispanic. It was one of her lyrics. She, oh, okay. she called herself Lanita. Oh. Um, so right. on Reddit, they started a thread against me, counter signaling me, because <laughs> they were so offended that I noticed that I had the gall to notice that Lana lost all of that extra weight. Mary sent me a message before the show. She said, when there's not enough topics to talk about, become the topic. Become the content, yeah. literally. Uh, <laughs> I knew that they were gonna get mad, but I didn't know it was gonna get this bad. Like, uh, I currently am getting ratioed uh, on Twitter over this, but they said, Twitter is so effing sick. I hate all these insufferable bitches. This actually genuinely makes me effing depressed. Wah, wah. These posts are making me lose all hope and faith in society. I effing hate it here and all these stupid effing people <laughs> that open their sorry excuse for a mouth and spew BS like this. You know there's a power off button on your phone. There's like and the only thing I said was that Lana is skinny again. And implied that that's no, a good thing. No, you're a bigot. No, no, you Th can't say that. You're I'm not pathetic. allowed to say that. You this can't. is just like over over identifying with a celebrity. Yeah. No, this what that's what really upsets me about the Taylor Swift saga that we saw with the Super Bowl. It's not so much that it, she was viewed everywhere. It's these people think they are Taylor Swift. They think that she knows them. I saw uh, a it's meme just, this weekend oh. that said Swifties are just juggalos from two parent households. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, you're kind of criticizing Lana in a way because clearly she lost the weight because she wanted to be skinny. So is there something wrong with us noticing that? No, you're offending uh, her larger fans, I think. Yeah, they said she's gorgeous at any size, yeah. but I bet a lot of fans who have larger bodies also feel extremely judged by these rude backhanded compliments. Just, stan the, culture really needs to chill. The, there's no such thing as good stan culture anyways, so they're wrong it about It reminds that. me oh, of no. like uh, when like these fangirls see someone and they need to make that person or character, they need to make that a representation of them. And yeah. then there was a meme that showed like a bunch of like, like, 
people from all different backgrounds seeing the guy from Dragon Ball Z, and they're like, that is me. Well, that yeah, that's, that's guys. Guys, guys can identify with great characters. Women want to see characters that look like them. Yeah, it's basically I dragging someone problem. down to rock bottom with you yeah. and not letting. Them. It's also it's also <laughs> like, the height of narcissism. Guess what? Most people don't live lives worthy of storytelling. They do not. Most of us live boring everyday lives where you drag your ass out of bed, you get ready, you go to work, you come home, you watch something on Netflix, and you go to sleep. Fine. That's good, but that's not what entertainment is supposed to be. Entertainment is supposed to aspire to something higher. If you believe that your life is the height of storytelling, then write an autobiography and, and don't make everybody else <laughs> have to identify with your shit. The more I read your tweet, it's really not that bad. It's not and like I said she was so ugly before yeah, when yeah. she was fat. I like, hated her when she was fat. I never streamed her music again. when she was fat. I'm literally just saying... It's a good thing that she is back at a healthy weight again. She looks but you, gorgeous. But remember, even Lizio, uh, Lizio, Lizzo is very, very healthy. Remember that. Ah, remember yes, that. has nothing so, to so, do with so health. So size does not indicate right. your health, Mary. By the way, uh, the remember. OP said, as someone who's always been considered a bigger girl, it actually makes me want to cry. Aww. We can never effing win. Nothing ever changes in society and nothing is ever going to change. I can't believe how effing normalized it is to comment on other people's bodies or weight like this. You're right, nothing is ever going to change because beauty standards don't change. They're objective, they're not subjective. No one is ever going to change what they find attractive to make you feel comfortable. That's At least on the macro scale. The sooner you accept that, the better. Did Elon, actually. Did Elon like the tweet? Um, no, why? Uh, one of the comments on the Reddit post, it says the way that Elon liked the post. And there's a screenshot of his likes. And oh, really? Are, yeah, yeah. Epic. <laughs> How does Elon not have his likes hidden? No, he wants people to it know. It could also, but there's no way to tell if this is actually his account. I have no shot, idea. I have no idea. That, I feel like so I would have noticed, but I don't I don't think I follow him. Actually, so yeah. so, I don't so know. people are mad because Lana Del Rey is skinny again, and Alan Richson has to talk about politics so they don't get mad at him for working out. Yeah. There's clearly a double standard <laughs> here. Another one <sighs> screenshotted my post on X and said, the amount of tweets similar to this, which I've seen alone, have been enough to show the hate train never really stopped. These tweets have also been coming from her stands too, which leads me to question, are you actually a stan? Because that isn't shown by your behavior. Um, Just be like, hey, I'm on the side of the, Amer of the old American Medical Association who said that being skinny will allow you to live longer. You know, I want that, uh, Lana to live a long time. You know, there's that old I also saying, want her uh, to be attractive. Who died and made you queen? Well, these, uh, these righteous stands <laughs> obviously feel that they are uh, in control. You Who know, died and made decide. you stand. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they think that they can decide. Like, I'm sorry, if you're a super fan and you're beefing with another super fan on what it means to be a super fan, you guys have Get all a life. <laughs> it's like, it's so like there's no hope for you. Like, I know, I'm not even saying that thing. I'm a stan. Like, I am a casual listener, casual fan of Lana Del Rey. I like her music. I like her look. And regardless of health, Let's just be real. We want public figures in this industry to be attractive. Like, that's not it's, a bad it's thing. It's because when you point out the fact that she's skinny, you are reminding the people that they are not. And they refuse. What they're not upset about you. They're upset yeah. the fact that they they are not doing what they need to do to get yeah. to that. They're they upset at themselves. She, yeah, it's they a self report. Liked that she was uh, overweight. Like I don't know how much she did weigh, but they liked when she was bigger because they're like, oh, she's like me now. She's well, just is, like me. And this is uh, the same thing that happened with Adele, where people got yeah. very mad when Adele lost yeah. the weight, or that, even yeah. Rebel Wilson, who said, look, I, my my doctor said if I wanted to have kids it would be a good idea for me to lose weight those people would yell I at mean, the doctor before they would look in the mirror the weird thing about too, this is, is like lana isn't getting any hate for her weight loss i'm getting hate for noticing the fact that she lost weight and, and you're, saying but something you're not allowed about to it. notice it you you're, need to you need to like sweep it under the rug and pretend isn't that it's quite all quite strange like you're just supposed to act like you never notice how people look these days yes it's very yes. very and weird everyone is beautiful no one is wrong like so i hmm. i responded to this person and i put a before and after one was from her in december last year and one was from coachella you can see there is quite a noticeable difference in her weight she dropped it pretty quickly if ozempic had anything to do with that then 
fine. Like that's not healthy. I saw a nerdy, nerdy film girl in the chat saying she's glad that everybody in Hollywood, that Ozempic is around because Kelly Clarkson's looking thin these days. I'm like, let's go. I mean, that's like, whatever. Like, mm. I don't think that it's the best way to lose weight because it has nothing to do with changing your lifestyle. But ultimately, I think what matters to me more is that entertainers care about how they look still. So I said, um, I want Lana to be skinny because no one can be their most happy, confident, healthy, or attractive when they're fat. Tell me this isn't a dramatic improvement from just a few months ago. Uh, There's a $20 one there from Francisco Sanchez Jr. He said, with his ultraviolence, 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 I can hear sirens, sirens. He hit me and it felt like a kiss. I can hear violins, violins. Give me all that ultraviolence, LDR. I'm waiting. For I don't think I've ever heard a Lana Del Rey song. Guys, I- I'm Actually, waiting for Most Rey. people have. There's one they don't with uh, ASAP Rocky. It's like Groupie Love Summer or Bummer, or was that? I think groupie it's Love groupie was pretty love. good. That's a yeah. very Coachella song. That's the only one I know. I'm yeah. waiting for this crisis party to go off, and I'm kind of terrified. After years of making oh, fun of Dane. Oh, are we for one now? Um, I'm kind of waiting for it. Nah, you'll be fine. It'll be great. Do you guys want me to pull up this before and after of uh, sure, sure. Lana Del Rey? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can see, like... You know, she she wasn't like obese, okay, but she was definitely overweight. And now it's like not even she's not even like I mean, that's heroin pretty, chic today. That's a pretty dramatic difference. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I but you can, can see like Satan. she doesn't even look unhealthy skinny. She just looks normal. And that's yeah, fine. If like was, if this was Lana music, I'd listen to it. Uh, yeah, I don't think she the... has any songs that sound like a crisis party. <laughs> crisis party song. <laughs> we need a Lana crisis party. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, but you can see, like, no one is celebrating her for being an unhealthy level of skinny. She's obese. I, I mean, I do think that that's a pretty, like, that's a pretty she, big difference. She didn't, like, carry it well. Yeah. I mean, like, when, let's be honest When you have that. dramatic, like, whether you're losing weight or adding weight dramatically in a short amount of time, it, it can look weird. You know, it can definitely. I don't like, even think three months or four months well, is like that short. To, to lose the weight, but how long did it take her to gain the weight? Is my question. That was longer. Was it longer? Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah her I mean, weight has good. fluctuated. She looks good. Yeah, it's just like it's not like. I don't know why they're so upset. They're upset because they don't see her, themselves. No, that her. this is this is a byproduct of the fact that all celebrities now are supposed to be an extension of a bunch of neurotic and self-involved people. You're not allowed to just be your own person, go through your own transformation, which used to be something that they would celebrate. I remember my favorite was ever like some celebrity actress would would have a baby, then they would be on a magazine cover like two months later and be stick thin, and then they'd be like, "How I got skinny after after baby yeah. number three. and then women started saying that all of that was toxic, and and that's one thing. It's one thing to say you had a kid and then you immediately lost all that weight. Maybe you don't need to do it quite that fast. It's a whole other thing to say losing weight at all is toxic well social media is also giving the illusion of people that like you can actually be friends with these these celebrities right like because now you're more connected you're not reading lana in a magazine you're reading her tweets so now you feel like she's your friend that you like yeah. you guys know each other yeah i just saw that pearl responded to me and just said she's on drugs like how okay, do we know pearl. that it's possible how do we I know mean, that? i mean I, but, oh, either way does that negate anything doesn't negate that she at, looks better that now. We've talked, you know, talked about. Yeah. I didn't ask how she got there. I didn't. I just said that she did. Yeah, well, and, and, and that she looks better. And if that's like, if people, if the uh, anti stands or whatever you want to call them that have been beefing with you, Mary, if they want to come at you and be like, listen, it wasn't a real weight loss. She used drugs. Sure, I'll hear that argument out. Like you, like yeah. we'll talk about that. But that's not what they're saying. But they're they just, just saying think you that, can't like, point it out at all. Yeah, you can't even notice that there's a difference. And there's been like discourse around this for a long time. I looked up like Lana Del Rey, uh, like weight fluctuation, and I saw all these headlines. Lana Del Rey deserves better than being body shames. Uh, fans defend Lana Del Rey as she's body shamed for new look. Lana Del Rey cruelly trolled overweight. You know what quote, it is? worse than 9-11. <laughs> trolling over Lana Del Rey's I, body proves that hypocrisy is alive and well. You know what it is? Um, oh, you know what Ozempic is becoming? It's like the it's like the DEI claim of weight loss, where it's like everybody who loses weight naturally yeah, has to Ozempic. now prove that they, that they didn't do Ozempic, just like anybody well, well, who is you, of... Uh, how are you supposed to do that? Because when you take the gym selfies, you get ridiculed too. Yep. So like, how are you supposed to prove you had an actual... like? natural weight loss if you're just going to get you know blasted for uh you know 
the extremism of be worth working out. Yeah. You can't win. You cannot win. And that's why I don't like I don't engage with these the, these the insanity because you will not win. Their goal is not to like win an argument or or sound logical. The goal is just to beat you into submission. Like, that's I all it think is. the prevalence of, of Ozempic in Hollywood right now proves their hypocrisy around these things. Because clearly, all of these people who preach about body positivity and inclusivity and beauty standards are subjective. All At the end of the day, all of them want to be skinny, and that's never going to change. All of them are vain, and they know that they want to be skinny. That's all that matters to them. And they're not willing to do the work to make it there. Mm -hmm. So they need to use this experimental drug that essentially gives them medicalized bulimia to puke their guts out and make them not hungry because they have no willpower. I mean, back in the day, they at least did it with, you know, Is that what it does? Speed. Because I can't imagine. It basically means you can't be hungry anymore. But you, then how, where does and... your energy come from? Like, are, are you not like just li like running on fumes That's all the thing, day? you still have to eat to not die, but yeah. they don't want they don't like they're not hungry anymore it's killed their appetite so it makes them throw like, no up no one said losing weight is easy it, it can be a very difficult thing but that's yeah. what that's the that's the beauty in it is that you, you know even though it's so difficult it's very See, simple back in the day, back in the day they had the dignity that's to just possible, do definitely. speed that's what they did yeah. to lose weight you know yeah. the opposite of hair you know it's kind of like there's two roads which way western women heroin chic Adderall <laughs> chic, or in this case, I guess, uh, speed chic. Now, yeah. you know, they got specialized drugs for it. Or, or it's, you know, Lizzo health. Like, that's the thing. They're like, oh, do you see what she's dancing and running around on stage? And I'm like, yes, but that doesn't necessarily, like, she's very active and capable for her weight, but it does not mean like she's healthy or we should strive to become that. You can only be healthy in spite of being uh, obese, not because To give them the benefit of obese. the doubt, let's say she's actually in great, great health. That's she's the exception, not the rule. Also, just let me be clear. I really care far less about these people being healthy than them being attractive. That I'm gonna be honest. I am shallow. Like I I emphasized this when we were talking about Lizzo. It is it is important to be attractive. Well, someone said in the chat. Um, they said uh, the song "Video Killed the Radio Star." They're like it's just becoming so so apparent now more than ever. Is that like you have to be attractive now? Like even with what you're saying is proof of that song is that like you can't hide behind a microphone and a speaker anymore like you need to make an appearance on a screen sure. and it's like yeah be aspirational if, if you're not attractive it's you're just it's just not gonna work we got a 20 dollar from Corey anderson Corey anderson he said how can we worry about lana del rey's weight loss when there's something something i don't know how to spell genocide also i am driving yes there is a genocide going on in gaza and the idea that you would care about weight loss when such atrocities are happening in israel and iran and all of these things are happening and iron dome and all that stuff how can you care when the world is exploding I'm just a bad person. There I was uh, somebody said over the weekend, they said, I love like my ti their timeline on Twitter because it's like genocide, genocide, war, war. And then me, I'm like Terminator Salvation was like the third yeah. best Terminator <laughs> after Terminator 2 and Terminator 1. Uh, it's far superior You're to Terminator 3, uh, Genesis and Dark Fate. You could totally, Brett, you could totally start like a, not a gimmick account, but like one of those accounts, just like white pill, just mm. all white pill content. I guarantee That's you. what my account is now. Yeah. But you, it's all white pill just content. Just like you just rack up the followers. By but, the way, um, be safe. Don't, I don't, I'm not going to tell you like not to super chat, but super chatting while driving doesn't sound safe. Uh, let's read more of our super chats. Let's go. DC and C said, Kellen, throw in a couple accidental chair cameos. They want to see chair. Um, I mean, I can if we, if we really want to. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not going to do it right now. <laughs> okay. Gordon Shumway said, Chef left because Isaac Hayes got offended over the Scientology episode. There, there was a go. Scientology episode? Yeah. Early days. That was funny. Okay. This is... Um, this is so funny sitting. I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to point out it is extremely weird to be here. Every time you like, we do a, do you want a, to sit in the other a switch. No, every time we switch topics and it's something where I would normally be doing any of the button pushing, I like reach. You're like reaching I'm like for reaching, the button. I'm reaching for a stream deck that isn't there. But it's like it's like you're teaching Kellen how to drive and you're slamming the non-existent yeah, brakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, hold the flashlight, Kellen. <laughs> Stop moving it. You're literally being Kellen's Red light. mean dad. <laughs> Yurishima Otaru said, according to Isaac's son, he had a stroke and didn't have the cognitive ability to quit. A Scientologist quit for him while he was relearning to speak. Damn. What? 
that's crazy okay ryan said last year there was a frank ocean dropping last minute and it was skrillex fred again and fortet less la traffic over coachella any day yeah wait skrillex coachella did happen last year though is skrillex still relevant yeah <laughs> He's, is he? he's I got, didn't think he's so. got like a residency. I think Serge was telling me he's got a residency at like this very, very historic like European club. And but and people are mad because he's like dubstep and that's not like the right type of genre. What? It's not what they play there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah he's still in, in the like EDM scene, he's still relevant. Yeah. Just not mainstream. EDM isn't mainstream anymore. No, but there's still I'm saying but in he, the EDM in scene, scene, he's very yeah. relevant. Yeah. Shane H. Wilder said just to bring back or just bring back Michaela Jill Murphy for Toff. Um, well, I don't know if that voice actress was um, blind and Asian, so maybe that's not an option anymore. It is really sad that that is what you have to do now that you have to <laughs> actually like imagine like this is what I was thinking about. How often do they tell you that you need to be free? You have to, you have to ignore your inhibitions. You have to be completely free to perform as long as you fit every exact characteristic of that character. Yeah. You have to be uninhibited, but exactly like that person at the same time. It's it not, makes no, yeah. those are contra, those are completely contraindicating. It doesn't make any sense. Nee said, watch Romance of a People, Eyes Wide Shut and Bohemian Grove. All questions will be answered. Christ is King. It's all being exposed, Mary. You sound like an NPC. Sorry. Everything is being exposed. Sounds like Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Mr. Self-Destruct said, Brett, watch MFKZ 2017. I will quiz you on ballers. Uh, I don't know what that is. MF. MFKZ. I don't know. I can't see it, so I, I, don't, I don't know what know. that means. You'll have to tell me what that means. Okay. Shane H. Wilder said, I may hate Richardson's remarks. Oh, Richson's remarks, but I enjoy Reacher. If I quit watching everything because someone involved said something I hate, all I would have to do is, or all I would have to watch is paint dry. Whoa, wait till you hear about what these paint companies did. Seriously, satanic paint companies. <laughs> They're woke. The paint companies are woke. You can't watch What's paint up with dry these, anymore. What's up with these woke paint companies? They're making all these colors because they have racial quotas. I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to. It's like um, Sherwin start... Williams paint the world. We all know what that means. Well, I'm sure Sherwin Williams got to where he is because he is a product of white supremacy helping elevate his brand in the face of far more marginal marginalized paint manufacturers okay there are marginalized shades of beige that is true you know, you know we're joking right now but i guarantee in the next couple of years we're going to see it's like why painting your walls white is like <laughs> that's already patriarchy. i guarantee you that's already a thing it's already racist to paint your walls white it's already racist to drink milk so oh yeah i forgot about that because oh, milk is white obviously. oh what am i gonna do now yeah mm. let's what about uh chocolate milk let's see is, is drinking milk racist? Uh, well, no, I just looked up paint. Uh, a racist painting reveals the blind spots of German art institutes, I bet. Um, so there's nothing about the paint itself yet. Someone get on that. My insides were absolutely raging. Black man accuses hobby store of racial profiling. I've heard open floor plan like kitchens. Are, are like racist open floor plan yeah it might have just been a tweet that i saw that had like racist. way too many likes but yeah like the layout of your house is like uh you know you're supporting the patriarchy racist take your pick okay a lot of people a lot of these articles are bringing up the kansas city chiefs player uh fan who had the oh uh, yeah yeah that's yeah. super racist man super racist <laughs> uh cory anderson said howdy y'all howdy Howdy. Howdy. And uh, I'm not going to read the next one you sent. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on. We're going to talk about Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa is currently going through her bad girl phase. Uh, and it's the most cringe thing I've ever seen. Uh, it's painful to watch, she to be honest. She just looks constipated all the time. <laughs> she, I mean, that was a separate issue, but then, <laughs> then this started. Um, she just put out this song called Karma, and it has bad words in it. Ooh, and I saw this headline. JoJo Siwa reveals that she's not that innocent after all. Just wait until I drop that F-bomb, she warns. <laughs> I like the top comment, like a three-year-old who found uh, mommy's makeup. Show them uh, these photos yeah, yeah. of her looking like Gene Simmons, will you? I got to give them a warning, it's her, this is This is kind of frightening her kiss stuff. Viewer era, discretion is advised. Her WWE era. Can't really decide what it's about. She said publicly that 
she saw Miley Cyrus have her bangers era when she like broke out from she's the Disney brand. She's not enough to have her own banger, bangers era. <laughs> and, and she said, when I was eight years old and I saw Miley Cyrus's bangers era, I immediately wanted to have my own bangers era. Um, but it's just not really hidden. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it feels like a publicist said you have to have this era and she's forced to commit to it. Yeah. Yeah. She also went on the Call Her Daddy podcast recently to explain the meanings of her new song lyrics that are incredibly raunchy and risque. So let's let's take a look at that. It was when I started writing new music. Okay. I got out of my <laughs> yeah, like music you. contract. I signed a deal with Columbia Records. Mm -hmm label has been amazing and I started doing music and honestly we started off like pretty pretty calm like okay. nothing like nothing like what's out right now um <laughs> and then I got pitched this song karma and it's the first word is I was a bad girl and I was like oh fuck the good song I was like but I can't say that I can't say I'm a bad girl I'm not I'm not I was 18 fresh off of my dream the tour and I was like, I can't say, I, was, I, I sang every girl's a super girl last week. Like I can't <laughs> sing I was a bad girl this week. It doesn't work. And uh, two years ago is when I started writing new yeah. music. I got what I want to know, as I asked you before the show is why she's wearing one of those dividers to get into the 18 plus section in a video store <laughs> on her head. Cause I've been, I, look, I, I tried to get in there when I was a kid and, and they wouldn't let me through. I don't know where, how she got a hat. That the hat keeps her, is certainly something. Her hat is keeping her out she, of the porn section of a, of a blockbuster video. It's like a generic black hat from Walmart that she then bedazzled. Well, I, I did actually watch the full episode and she explained that her mother made that hat for her. Aww. So how dare you say that? Well, well, her mom wanted to keep her out of the her mother's plus crafting section. abilities. Yeah. I want I want to know what her mom thinks of this uh, bad girl phase. <laughs> yeah, well, she also said that recently her parents moved out of her house. Um, she that I believe though, because yeah. she's just loaded. Yeah, she is loaded. And guys, if you don't know her background, she started out on this reality TV show on TLC called Dance Moms. That was is essentially that where she started? yeah, it was oh. essentially about all of these child dancers getting emotionally terrorized by their dance instructor Abby Lee Miller. So we can see that she might have some issues from that. Uh, then she got signed as talent with Nickelodeon. Um, she claims nothing untoward happened when she was at Nickelodeon, in case anyone was That's wondering. That's what they all say. But that, that is what they all say, isn't it? Um, but yeah, she's just getting, she's trying to justify this really cringy phase that she's having with, I'm just trying to break out of my child star persona where like she was wearing glitter and sparkles and pink all the time. She had this like high ponytail. She wore these gigantic the, bows. The problem is though, and I get that, like if you are a child star and you're singing about rainbows and unicorns, the next week you can't, you know, wear that ridiculous kiss costume we saw. Like you can't do that. Like, it, it doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. Maybe the head... She can make her own music. She doesn't need to go out of her way to go find like the most edgy song. Yeah, but like, only certain things are going to allow to work. Too hard. Like the industry will tell you, you have to do that to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Maybe her mom just thinks she's ugly and is trying to block her face with that. Hat. I thought she yeah, was just Australian. make sure they can't see you. Is she not Australian? I thought no, she was she's Australian. American. Is she? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she's from Nebraska, I think. That explains everything. <laughs> Does no, it? No. But, um, yeah, I, I honestly thought, she, I don't know why I thought she was Australian. I didn't think she was American. Maybe just because she's so cringe. Comparing she's her trying. I, I agree in the chat. She's trying really, really hard. And it's uh, it's kind of like when somebody, if somebody goes out of their way to tell you they're cool, they're probably not cool. Uh, if somebody yeah. goes out of their way to tell you that they're in their bad girl era, she's likely not actually all that, which is uh, like a weird type of reverse wholesomeness. She's like trying too hard and it just comes off like somebody who doesn't actually know what they're talking about. Like our cringe of the day one day last week was her choreography for this song where she's just aggressively humping the air and grabbing her crotch <laughs> and like the point of the music video we can't show it because of copyright but like the point of the music video is that she is basically just like <laughs> she's from pennsylvania <laughs> so she's gonna be the one oh, campaigning no. for fetterman she's she's basically just there like we go humping the ground and like there are these girls all over her and she's just really into like i wonder if anyone ever said that's a no-no jojo she they needed to tell her 
Jojo, no, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. to Jojo. No, no. Yeah. Hashtag they're no, they're no, comparing no. her to the villain in, in the Incredibles oh, movie. Yeah, I gotta pull this one. <laughs> She's popping off in this new era. How? I mean, I suppose, does she talk about abortion a lot? She'll probably be on the abortion train with Olivia Rodrigo soon. No, actually. So this is interesting. They, they were talking about this on her podcast where she said she came out as a lesbian oh. in 2021 when she was 18 years old, I think. Um, and once she posted about that, she said she got, like, she was talking about it in this most transparent way that was like, I basically came out as gay for clout, where she was like, I got like comments from Ellen and all of these celebrities who were telling me congrats and blah, blah, blah. And she says she got a ton of hate from parents who said, I'm not going to let my kid watch JoJo mm. anymore because she's pushing gay stuff. Yeah, even on if you're not like, here's the thing, even if you're not against like LGBTQ rights or whatever, you, if it, she's a child star, you're not, that's sex, sure. you know, LGBTQ is sexual in nature. So it's like, why are you pushing that onto children? No, you know, I, that's a huge problem. I completely agree. But she was trying to make it out like she was basically hate crimed <laughs> because some parents decided she wasn't a good influence for their kids anymore. Well, and yeah. also she was saying that Nickelodeon kind of freaked out and she was still signed with Nickelodeon at this point. And they brought her into this meeting and they were like, what are we going to tell our partners? And like, they brought her on this conference call with like all of these brands that she had sponsorships with. And immediately what all of these people said uh, on the conference call was, congrats, this is amazing news. We're already thinking about merch for Pride Month. Oh no. So immediately everyone- It's so sad too, because the people that like kind of get sucked into that world, they don't realize it's just it's just capitalism, capitalism's latest fad. It's just rainbow it, capitalism, yeah. literally. And they were like, we're thinking about like rainbow <clears throat> Jojo Siwa bows and just immediately thinking about how can we merchandise and profit off of you being gay. But she was framing it in the interview like it was a good thing. Right, right. <laughs> like she doesn't even know that she's a product. Like I, I they've just lost the plot like i guess capitalism is so powerful because they're able to fool the you know fool people time and time again you mm -hmm. know like i don't think they care anymore i think there's just a certain level of narcissism that anything that allows yeah. them to continue to be successful they don't care if it has something to do with no, that it has nothing to do with something that they earned and everything yeah. to do with something that they just inherently are like that doesn't bother them whereas back in the day it would have bothered but, someone to be celebrated for something that they didn't have control over but like the 80s and up until like you know obama legalized gay marriage like it was about an actual right you didn't have you couldn't get married now it's like okay no i need to be accepted everywhere mm -hmm. i go and championed like that's what it's boiled down to and if that doesn't happen they think they're being oppressed <laughs> i think that jojo siwa must have realized she couldn't capitalize off of just being gay anymore so she realized she had to are you sure she abandoned she it just because to... she's dressing in kiss makeup are well, we sure she's abandoned it? No, I mean, she realized that, like, <laughs> being gay wasn't enough of a persona anymore. Uh, I see. Okay. Everyone's doing it. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. doing it. So I have to break the mold again. So she decided to put on a bunch of face well, paint. If, it's yeah, just weird because it looks like there's, like, bad girl. if you look at the thing where it's, like, Jojo Siwa puts on a very raunchy show, it just looks like somebody's sexualizing a Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, no. And it's, <laughs> it's disconcerting and weird. Yeah. I don't like it. How old is Jojo? She's uh, 20. Cabbage Patch doll age, and I don't like it. It's gross. She said, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it was Jojo Siwa puts on very raunchy show, including kissing background dancer in front of her mom at Miami oh, Beach Pride. No. She gets me too'd. After admitting she didn't invent gay pop. So, Glad for that she like cleared I, that up. I, I, Thank I, you. I feel really bad for Jojo because like, okay. now that I know that she was a dance mom kid, like <clears> she's been just a product her entire life I, she's been just you know yeah Brett, okay. like you might think this is ridiculous but she was talking about what it's like to be a child athlete uh. and she you know you having experienced this tell me if this is normal is it normal for your coaches and instructors to just emotionally terrorize you 
Um, Throwing chairs, screaming, no. fighting. Like I mean, it, in sports is a little bit different. Sports, I mean, sports, they can be hard on yeah, you in sports. Does, but, I mean, sports is not like that, but you hear that all the time from like the dance. The dance instructor, it's weird. It's a weird world, like to be in dance yeah. and pageantry. And she stuff. made it sound like this was just normal to her for her whole life, because and she never the, questioned it's it. It's the parents living vicariously through the kids, and so that's yeah. why you get a bunch of this adult energy causing mayhem. Right. Go to the go to the article of her where it says she puts on a raunchy show and scroll down to like the. To oh some, yeah. The, she's no longer in her her in her pro wrestling days, a la. Uh, the blue meanie. Now she's in her non-crow sting era. Oh. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Oh, go up. Uh, oh, no, 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 keep going down. What is go this? Down. Not that one. Not that one. The Wait, what? It's like the next one, right? Keep going. That one. I'm sorry. Yeah, she's, she's, many she's, WC, photos, man. she's WCW sting now. Is what she is before he went. As, I was gonna say before he became still crow sting. Like the, these like little pride flag shoulder strap things so i think the bad girl's definitely like uh she's she's the bad is there a company girl. that's just called pride inc that just <laughs> becomes the unofficial like <laughs> seller to all for all this should merchandise we, imagine, like, yeah, it should just be a, a company called pride. A meme coin just called pride yeah it makes so much money it's just sad because obviously a lot of her fans were much younger than her um as she was growing up and now they're still like her fan base is still a lot of kids and this is what they're seeing their role model turn into um like i get that it's not fair to have a lot of pressure put on you as a child entertainer right but why <gasps> was this is right. the move he d she does look like the ultimate warrior thank you that's exactly what she looks like. Holy crap! <laughs> That's. I mean, she's not quite as buff as the Ultimate Let's Warrior, but she's she's getting there. She she should have a thing where she grabs the ropes and she goes like. This. Honestly, dude, if JoJo joined the WWE as the gay pop star, I I think I I might, I might watch. That might it. be her next move. I might be down. Like you don't know. She's already dressed for it. They don't need to hire any like <laughs> costume. They don't like. She's good. She's ready. Also, this is all so much like. No matter how much things change, they stay the same. Like. This is every pop star's journey, kind of these days. That's her era. They have to they have to escape their, you know, their teen years or their good girl phase somehow. Unless you're yeah. like Hillary Duff. Well, it's it's the, you have to do everything. You have to be an actress. You have to be a singer. You have to do pageants. Like you can't just like whatever happened to like Lana Del Rey or Adele, who they they just, just like I sing. Walks in front of a of a um, microphone, yeah. smokes a cigarette, that's what and I barely do. tries. Well, and you know you it. can't do that anymore because you know uh, that's why they say Jenna Ortega lost her popularity after she got the photos came out of her smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. Um, fellow child star Lil Tay also put her two cents in saying, I wish I didn't I wish I didn't just find out who Jojo Siwa is. I wrote Sucker for Green myself, didn't buy the song or hire a ghostwriter. Please don't mention me and her in the same sentence. It's true. She's defending herself. You don't herself. have to like the song, but I appreciate the creativity because nobody's creating anything anymore. Well, a lot of people are giving Jojo Siwa some flack because she bought karma she didn't write that song but she's making it sound like she wrote the song by saying like oh this is about my ex <laughs> like, like, so her being so i'm looking at these screenshots now of this music i haven't watched the music video but it's so it's like she's just getting it on so that's her idea of being a bad girl is to just publicly displaying your, your sexuality right is that her idea of being a bad girl yeah. Because that's what it seems like. Yeah, and it's like, like... She's not like robbing a liquor store or anything, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's way more... It's way funnier uh, if she goes the complete opposite route and just becomes a criminal. Yeah, they say... <laughs> that's yeah. what I think of. Like, they, they say... She becomes Florida woman. Right. <laughs> yes. They say be gay, do woman. crimes, but I never see them doing crimes. They're just being gay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she needs to do some crimes or else I'm not it's buying this whole core. bad girl phase she's got going it's on. Just soft she just porn. knocks over a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> drives into it with her. What, like, she has like a rainbow uh, Corvette or something, right? I mean, no, she'll, she'll, she'll get a rainbow colored Glock I thought she had like a, she No, she actually does have like a pink sports car or something oh. like that. She just she, drives it right through the wall. Jojo Siwa actually has two cars that are wrapped in her own face. I'm serious. <laughs> Like, she is that much of a narcissist. 
She she has two sports cars wrapped in, the, in images of herself. In the chat, uh, Funk is uh, Funk Butter says nobody is creating anything anymore. There's content. There's more content than ever before. Uh, the indie uh, and the indie in, the, and the indie scene in every entertainment media is huge. Yes, but we're talking. They're talking about the prepackaged people that come from companies like Disney, that come from companies like Nickelodeon, or are off these reality TV shows that have to eventually move from one genre to another. It's all very formal. Formulaic yeah. And of a certain type of property. I mean, do you guys think that Miley Cyrus's bad girl phase was more authentic or was it just as that felt corporate? Just no, as... no, she got ridiculed in the media when she was doing it. Right. Like, I feel like back Still when... Still did not want her to Back do that when... Stuff. Yeah. Back when Miley Cyrus was in her wrecking ball era, she actually got a lot of hate. Like when she did that performance with Robin Thicke at the VMAs, everyone hated it. And she did get a lot of hate. And I think that that was justified actually because you know we shouldn't have disgusting if, displays if like that JoJo, on television if jojo but, made a, a music video of her going to church and praying that's what would cause that would be i mean the yeah girl. but that the culture the yeah backlash. the culture has gotten so degraded that we are just expected to do this now and jojo siwa is doing the exact same thing miley cyrus did 10 years ago except this time no <laughs> one is shocked by it it's we have been completely yeah. desensitized i think the difference is is what you back back when it was done before there was like this veil of pushback from the industry and miley was the start of when the industry just stopped caring about the pushback right and we've just evolved and just started embracing it yeah. like embracing degeneracy to the highest extent mm. even if it if it was already at that point before what she brought th to the table that was new is the fact that her public persona up until that point was kid friendly. Mm. Um, but I, I just think like, do something original, right? Like come up with your own ideas. It's just bizarre to me that she's even admitting that she's copying someone else. <laughs> she's just like, yes, I bought the song. Yes, I bought the song. I love capitalism. Yes, I copy. I am copying Miley Cyrus. She spent 50K on her teeth. Mm. Jojo Siwa did? Yeah. Caps. I didn't know that. She, uh, it's in this article that we pulled up. Um, She's also talking incessantly 50, about how she wants to like have three surrogate babies and she already knows what she's going to name them oh and she got them tattooed, she tattooed on her, right? <laughs> she, well now she says that was temp those were temporary tattoos so i think she was lying but yeah yeah it's so a very strange path that she's, she's going trying. down right now she's trying too hard she's trying too hard i think most likely like we're something like this they'll find a more authentic version of themselves after they do this <laughs> and then they have to just hopefully yeah. I, mean, I think like she doesn't even have an authentic personality because she was so stunted as a child star but like and you shouldn't look for that in the mainstream industry anyways you're yeah. not looking for you're not going to find a whole lot of authenticity when it comes to this genre in this part of uh, hollywood it's just so funny that everyone is hollering and begging for representation but then the second they get this kind of representation they're like no not that not that like not like that please um you know you get what you pay for let's go to super chats <laughs> shane h wilder said damn it Corey. also the new lana album is scheduled for september glad to she see she lost the weight now if we can get brett to do the same lol jk ow damn well, i got him bro well, you called yourself me i put ozempic in his uh, christmas stocking i don't know if he's using it though. damn it Did i never you put checked ozempic it. in his monster energy yes. <laughs> damn it i'm being shamed that's just rude Corey Anderson said, I stand PCC and Mary, but not in a weird way. Mm, sounds okay. like one of those weird stands. I mean, if you have to say it's not weird, like, it might, it might be, be weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> Jinx, yep. Rai Leon said, did y'all address Games Workshop injecting wokeism into its flagship property Warhammer 40k two days ago? See the official Warhammer X account reply wouldn't be surprised I, I wonder how that will uh affect things with cavill in the show i yeah i actually did see someone tweet about that like is it still okay to be warhammer bros <laughs> right now but i haven't looked into that shane h wilder said kellen listen to born to die and ocean boulevard albums okay i didn't like ocean boulevard i'm gonna be honest i don't like a lot of lana's new music i think she kind of fell what, off what but genre I, is it in general, I guess it's just alternative pop, but a lot it's of it is upbeat, just like, it's, like it's, it's kinda... yeah, it's like melancholy. Okay. Yeah. Nate I'll said, being a video podcaster is proof you got to be at least pleasant to see. 
Yeah. Yeah, you can't just survive on a face for radio. 200 Watt Studio said, Mary, you look great I, today. Gray is your color. Thanks. Actually, to go on that back, the previous Super Chat, no, we've got the um, that one person that performed at Coachella. It wasn't even a real person. It was like AI. I thought it didn't show up, though, like the, the hologram. Uh, Who was it, it supposed to but be? But it's an artist. I can't think of her name, but it's like... Was people it Niku? Yeah, 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 yeah. The so, fake pop star? That's what I'm saying. So people are doing that. Yeah. With streamers do that where you don't know what they look like. Mm -hmm. So AI and has kind of brought back the radio star in a way. So. Yeah, that's weird. That, that would freak me out. Because they couldn't even get the hologram to work. Yeah, it was just like on the screen. There's like yeah, a... That's terrible. <laughs> there's a podcaster that I listen to who does a wrestling podcast named Solomonster Sounds Off. That's the name of the podcast. And like... He would, he would, uh, his clips would get put up on YouTube, but they would be just like the audio clips from it. But he started streaming a couple of years ago and he sounds nothing like what he looks like. And to this day, when I watch, like, when I watch like a live episode after a, pa a pay per view, I can't imagine that that voice is coming from that person because it just doesn't connect to me. Yeah. Like, he's got a deeper, more radio voice and he's like really, really thin. It's just really, really disconcerting. You almost don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Yet, somehow, there's some people who sound exactly like what they sound like, and other people don't sound anything like what they sound like. Do you think that some people listen to us on Spotify and they've never seen us? That would be great. I bet there are at least some. That would be great. Well, if, you ha if that's you, please. Tell us what you think. We do a horrible like. job of like describing the videos when we does, watch them. Does Spotify, I know YouTube will recommend like the show if you're watching something similar, but will Spotify recommend it if no. you're listening to something similar? No, I don't think so. So okay, let's get into our last topic. Wife Jack. This is yeah, this is a white pill for sure. I think the wife Jack meme is healing the battle of the sexes. It's like calling a truce between men and women and healing the dynamic. This is basically a Wojak that is a self portrait that a woman made of herself, but it got titled the wife Jack and was getting posted all over Twitter over the weekend. And Basically, I was puzzled by it at first, which is fitting because women aren't supposed to get it. But all of the captions are just things that the quintessential <laughs> wife's or girlfriend would say or does say. And women are reading this and like having an existential crisis it, because we all say the same stuff. They're not, yeah, they're not even like offensive. It's That's just like a normal thing. That's things. the point, right? <laughs> None of the captions that are given to Wife Jack are, have any negative connotation. It's literally just like, Women be saying this. If anything, it becomes a, a self-report if you're offended by it. It just means that you probably do it a lot. Yeah, it has its own Know Your Meme page now. So uh, we can pull up some examples from there. Um, she Here she is. She has red hair. Love the ginger representation. Honestly, the second one is my is my favorite because it's just... It's, it's, one well, of them is obviously... The captions, right? I'm cold. So what are we doing today? <laughs> you were supposed to turn there. I didn't order what I wanted. Um, where are we going this weekend? Uh, like the the second one is none of my, it is like bad. The second one is my favorite. You should buy me flowers, but not right now. It has to be your idea. <laughs> um, uh, I noticed your pillow was yellow and gross, so I threw it out and got well, you a new one. Well, it's memory the, foam. That one, I don't know. That, that's kind of gross. I don't know who has ye gross yellow pillows. That's kind of... I mean, that is a meme, right? Is it? A lot of guys like keep the same pillow for like five to ten years at a time. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But I, mean, I think that the ultimate I'm point cold. of this was <laughs> none of the captions are denigrating the wife jack no the, if anything or the, it's, it's, or the husband jack really. it's wholesome it's it's wholesome decidedly so and a lot of women like didn't realize that and started having a crisis over it one said do men realize the psychic damage they've unleashed every woman on twitter is over analyzing these trying to figure out if they pattern match this woman stressing over whether that's good or bad and i gotta be honest i i saw some wife jacks and i felt called out like, Which ones? I specifically, um, there was one that said you need to ask your friends more questions. 
<laughs> um, oh, I, I said uh, I saw one. Then it was the husband Jack replying to the wife Jack, and it said, "Did you drink water today?" <laughs> there was there was a lot of that. It's like, so I, have a headache. <laughs> I can't find my phone. Can you call me? <laughs> husband Jack definitely started circulating as well. Uh, one of them said, "I don't. I didn't think you cared about your birthday that much." <laughs> Um, looking at an obscure Wikipedia page on his phone. Um, this one's a deep cut. He says, but you aren't a worm. <laughs> yes, that was the, the that ultimate wife. Jack is, would you still love me if yeah. I was a worm? Yes. Obviously. I like this one. Who is that guy? Why is he doing that? What did he just say? Wait, can we rewind it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just resting my eyes. I like that one. Do That's you mind one. if I wait outside Sephora? <laughs> um... I, I like this. Oh, I like this. What do you want for dinner tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You pick. I'm asking you. <laughs> the wife Jack meme represents the return of good old fashioned husband wife comedy. We are so back. What I think is missing, and this is why things like uh, Red Pill and feminism have kind of hijacked what used to be wholesome aspects of couples and relationships. Uh, back in the day, when a guy would say something like, I have to ask my wife permission to before I can go, or happy wife happy life they didn't have the negative connotations these days because i think it, a lot of it has to do with us as a society we're a lot more narcissistic than we were back in the day and perhaps we were more willing to give unto our spouse or our our partner so when these things are said now it's taken from a narcissistic standpoint so when somebody says that it feels like he's saying it in a way as if he actually has to ask her permission well, when the, that's not what that's supposed phrase, to mean and guys if you disagree please let us know in the chat what you think of this phrase they always say um, I'll have to check with the wife. Yep. And they say that's a huge red flag. That means the wife runs the household. She rules the roost. She's long housing him. What it she actually has means to is... ask for permission to do anything or leave the house or see his friends or do guy stuff. Do say, what it actually means is he doesn't want to go and he's going to use her that... as an excuse not to go. Yes, it either means that or it means that someone who's married, you know, lives their life with another person therefore that other person should be informed about where they or, are i would say <laughs> and the other the other thing it could be is let's like let's say your buddy asks you to go on like a three-day fishing trip right that's like an extended period of time where if you have a family and a wife like and it wasn't planned like yeah right. you should you just try you can't just go but i guess you if know? a single That'd guy kind of a dick move. if a single guy hears the words i'll have to check with the wife they must assume there's I, some kind of negative connotation I feel like to people it people that but... complain about it aren't actually married they must be right like they must not be I yeah, mean. yeah 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 like, like the, it just doesn't have nearly the same connotation they that think you're assuming yeah, they at th all. and they think it's way more of a big deal than and these is. are and these way are talking points from a generation that was a lot more that perceived relationships in a lot more wholesome manner than they're perceived sure. today uh, i like lauren chance says guess who got in K engaged no, I said guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are good ones. Uh, what curb? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's been me. That's definitely been me. Look, I, I think it sh all it does is shine a light on just how divided the, the sexes are when these are things that should be wholesome that people might take in a less wholesome Some, fashion. Someone chatted. They said, this is comedy. It's just reality. But like, that's why. That's reality like, is funny. A, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, like poking fun at the real tropes is what especially is what something is that's it was like fifty percent off spoken thing that we all kind of experience. Like it's kind of funny when someone points that out. You yeah. know, like there's tweets like that that have happened before, and be like, I uh, can't be the only one that does this, right? And it's kind of a weird niche thing, right? You know, exactly. And it's like oh, I, I like that's, that's the too. basis for like most comedies that most people think like I'm the only one who's experienced this awkward right. moment or this like faux pas. But everyone gets to kind of take their guard down when they realize it's everyone has been through that. So I kind of feel like a lot of the content on X right now, or maybe it's just my algorithm, but a lot of it seems to be pitting men and women against each other. That's everyone trying to stoke days. the flames of misandry and misogyny both ways. And this was like a much needed reprieve from that. <laughs> and that also just like rang true for anyone who you know i'm kind of going through withdrawal though because like, all of saturday and sunday there were wife jack memes and today i'm not really seeing any it, and it, now it I'm, like, cycled I'm, like, out I'm like, I'm like oh where am i where are my memes they were it's so good three hours after saying nothing is wrong 
I just think it's funny how. <laughs> 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 and that's another thing. <laughs> Yeah, oh, exactly. Man. And a lot of women don't know this, but they they want to be with a man who has some level of benevolent sexism. So what's true. That, so what, there's here's one. That meme is not about me, is it? Uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> there's or, a spider in the bathroom. Could you come here and kill it? Or the wife jack is like, D is this supposed to be a good or a bad thing? <laughs> Like the the point of it is that like you don't know. I didn't ask you about your past. <laughs> <laughs> some of pe some people were like trying to ruin it, and they were like making it something that was like bitter and like weird, but or too personal, or too, or, or too, too individual. That where it's like that's not the point yeah. of memetics, anyways. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, since you me mentioned memetics. Someone superimposed wife jack onto that viral Lil oh, Yachty video. Yes, play the video. It's amazing. It's wife jack entering the mimetic collective consciousness today. So when I saw this, I was just like, bro, I got to get off the internet for the night. The fact that this makes sense to me means I got to get the hell out of the I really wish we today. could keep the music because it's so good. No, we can because it's just the crowd. I didn't, get, I didn't get copyrighted when I played this before. Oh, when okay. I, I think, yeah. did we play the Hitler one before? Oh, I don't know. Okay, because the music is, yeah. <laughs> oh no, we played the Joker one before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's so good. laughs> Thanks, I hate we, it. We could use with more wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> We need uh, more wholesome memes between the sexes. We do. Yeah. There, yeah. there needs to be more of this. Fantastic. Because if you're fueled by hate and bitterness and anger, you can't be funny. You've yeah, lost your ability to See, make jokes. When the world needs it, it will insert the golden wholesome meme. Like, yeah, we're swinging back. Oh Thank you. Puts ice cold feet on you. You're warm. <laughs> I saw some weird thread the other day that somebody made that said like a wo like a woman will never leave a man who's physically warm. That's true. <laughs> That's why I said it's an ick if he's cold. It shows he, he can't keep you warm. Or right? he's hungry. I guess. You yeah. could have parked he's closer. You could have parked yeah, closer. That was a big one. one. That's a good one. <laughs> that was a big one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My That's I, I I never park super like I never park super close. Um Oh. Can you scratch me between the shoulder blades? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that sounds like a husband jack, though. Uh, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so he says, first woman to use this meme correctly, and it says, does anyone know what this meme is supposed to mean? <laughs> if anyone politicized wife jack or husband jack, you can just stay out of this meme. You can just sit with this one out, please. Why is she just saying normal things? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really get it. <laughs> Look, we like it everything online these days, everything on Instagram, uh especially algorithmically, you are benefited from pushing the other sex in a negative direction and fighting with one another. It's I, just the way the algorithm works. I like works. the wife jack of Adam and Eve and it's like we should eat that apple. I love that one. <laughs> that was funny. Um but yeah, it seems like this is already kind of like cycled out. There's some, the and, and then they did they did mun some with the husband that says like, "Have you seen my keys?" Yeah. Yeah. There's one that says like, "Tugs the ratchet straps." That's not going yes, anywhere. Yes, yes, that, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he actually broke his toe in this scene? That I felt unbelievably called out by that one. That's that's he's, me. He's the IMDb the, trivia yes, section the, husband the man, Jack. The mansplaining the movie. Yes, like the obscure movie details. <laughs> usually, yeah. So I was we were watching Terminator, Terminator Salvation over the weekend, and I was like, you should go. You should go Google the way that that actor died in real life because it's effed up and sad. And it's this actor named Anton Yelkin who got like his car. He, he was driving a Jeep that had a recall and it mm. like it like left park and like basically backed up into him and pinned him between oh, a pillar in his I home. And I was like, you should go read how that dude died. <laughs> and it's just like you're just watching a movie and I'm just telling you this unbelievably depressing like macabre dark, reason dark this actor Jack. is no longer with us. <laughs> One of the husband jacks said, "Honey, where is the ketchup? I can't find That's it." That's like right. It's right in front of his face. <laughs> How long is the check engine? Has your check engine light been on? Oh my goodness. 
Look at this obscure Wikipedia page. Looking at this obscure Wikipedia page oh, on his phone. I like, yes. I'm letting it soak. Yep. <laughs> Another, oh, there was one hun husband, Jack, that said, I think the baby wants you. <laughs> that was good. Oh, right. The birthday party is tomorrow. Who is it again? <laughs> don't throw the box away. I might need it for something one day. Oh, I saw <laughs> yes. No, don't throw the adapter away. I saw the one where it was like, uh, it, it was the wife, Jack, saying to the husband, it, it's your father's birthday next week or something mm -hmm. like that. I was like, that's a good one. That's vital. See, this is men and women realizing that they need each other you know what again. it is you know what it is it's like it's the lack of polarization around the idea of like leaving the toilet seat up where it's like so where like they make a big deal about that they're like yeah. it takes two seconds to put it down i'm like or it takes two seconds to put it down I'm like exactly it takes two seconds to put it down this is what you respond it's like so if it takes me two seconds it takes you the same two seconds i don't it's get like, it you know those those toxic moms who post with their sons and they say like i'm teaching him to mm -hmm. put the toilet seat down so that he doesn't have so to be a dusty boyfriend women. one day so that he which is just women. effed up and that's like everything not what we're talking about right now like <laughs> this is obviously the opposite of that and like that's why we love it um, so this is a positive development it's finally something that didn't make me want to die that trended on X. And when we post this clip, it will get no views because positivity gets no love in society. It's true. Well, when you, you know. It's true. Don't, don't be so depressing now. You should have made the thumbnail, we hate wife Jack. We should, yeah, we could. There you go. Wife Jack is the worst thing to ever happen to the internet. Wife Jack is super cringe. Yeah. Cringer than JoJo. I mean, even you were just. Cringer than JoJo. Off air, you were talking about um, happy wife, happy life and explaining like, obviously this is something that is said by a husband who just enjoys making his wife happy, which makes him happy. Like, it shouldn't have a negative connotation but to it, it does. but a lot of times yeah. these days it does, but that's because people will tell you that society has changed and that men are expected to be the same that they were in the 50s and women have been allowed to change because of feminism and equal rights and everything, so it's all skewed. Yeah. But it doesn't need that context if you're dating somebody who's reasonable or married to somebody who's reasonable and not awful. Which is most people, at least I would hope. Mm. Who knows? Let's finish up these super chats now. Uh, nee said, July 3rd, 1933, Soldier Field, Romance of a People, Child Sacrifice to Moloch, now watch the other two stop cowering for the tribe. I keep seeing somebody in the chat today saying that we worship Moloch. Why would you think that? Isn't that a type of seafood? <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat any seafood, so no. The joke is mollusk. But... I don't eat anything from the water. Oh, okay. Nothing at all. Good. I love water bugs. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Miss me with that nonsense. Sparta Chris said, Norwegian University did a study saying the white in their flag is a sign of racism. Ah. I always have. Wow. A... Ah, Norway. Ah, yes. I didn't connect those dots until well, you said says, that. Hail, uh, Rhaegar Targaryen says, hail mollusk. <laughs> Seth Essington said, I want to send a super chat, but don't know what to say. Sir Rinko Productions, Tacti Platy, Olivia Claire, Brett Dasovic. Nice. Astute observation. Thank you. Okay. I think. Well, well thanks I for like super it. chatting anyway. Thank you. Corey Anderson said, Jojo is a plant like a ficus, probably. Yeah, probably. It, you, like an industry plant, I no, guess? But no, like a ficus. Oh, okay. Like your ficus score. Okay. Me? Ficus is a plant, right? Is, yeah. Yes. Me said, what does Larry Silverstein and Epstein share? I don't know. A sandwich? <laughs> Corey Anderson said, I said it last week. I'll say it again. Jojo is fake gay. Oh, yeah. I mean, but... We Doesn't matter. She can come out later and just say she's bisexual. We all know. It's just trendy. Well, like, she had a boyfriend before. It's like wearing <laughs> leg warmers or silly bands. Just yes, be. that's what it is. It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Druish AF said, any plans to see First Omen? I took my wife out to see it this weekend and actually thought it was good, despite a lot of demon R-wording. 
Uh, oh, doesn't sound like my cup of off. tea. Gotta be honest. Um, I think next I'm gonna go see. Uh, so I'm not gonna be here on Friday, so it kind of hurts the ability to do this. But Fall Guy, I think, comes out soon. I, this That's week, the week after. The week after. Week, so I think. I think Fall Guy would probably be the next movie we end up reviewing. I do think you guys should go see The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare there. It was fun. And they got you out of there in like two hours, which is always a good thing. Nate said I can stream without being on camera. So you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Darkvex OG said the amount of plans I have for the future that I'm actually aware of is zero. My wife is literally my calendar. There you go. That's a wife jack meme somewhere Wholesome. in there. The manic mustache said my wife, I'm in I'm increased my super chat budget. Aww. Hi, gang. Thank you, uh, Ma Th Manic Mustache's wife. And thank you to, yeah, to Mrs. Mustache. Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. <laughs> Mustache, for the money. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, asking your wife is not asking permission. It's acknowledging that you have a responsibility to someone else, and there is a wife, wait, that a wife is more important? I understand what he means. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I get, true. Yeah, and, I and if someone really wants to do something, they're going to do it. <clears throat> like, I mean, unfortunately, there are a lot of toxic wives out there that are the reason there's a negative connotation to those phrases. Like, sure. there are tons of wives out there who are just like, they rule with an iron fist. I watched an awful video over the weekend where this just absolutely entitled just see you next Tuesday is like walking. She's like, I'm on a girl's trip. And my husband's calling me every hour and she's, she talks in this really condescending voice about how she basically responds to her husband as he's like, I'm getting dinner. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And he sounds codependent, but more than likely he knows that she's on a girl's trip and he just wants to keep tabs on her to make sure that she's not off. Like, you know, dying Gall gallivanting. Yeah. I was going to say something far worse, but the, the point is you have to hear the way she's like, she says everything. And like, she talks in this video, like she's talking to her husband, like he's a child and it's the worst type of toxic feminism you could possibly see. And that's where the bad reputation around but is the husband comes from. toxic for, for he's calling he's her codependent and kind of lame sounding or he's calculating and knows that if he doesn't keep checking on her, she's probably going to end up in bed with some dude named Chad. Well, sounds, and sounds like their marriage is already on the rocks. But it's, so. it, well, it's, it's on the rocks because she made this video where she's insulting her husband secondhand. It was on the rocks before yes. she made the video is what I'm trying to say. The Manic Mustache said, apropos, but apropos Pee Wee Herman, Al Richman doesn't want to end up in a Paul Rubin era, but at least Cowboy Curtis made it out of the Matrix. What? I can't see it. Do you understand any of that? I can't see <laughs> it. Because I don't. I can't say that I do. I think Brett would, but. Okay. Taxi Platy said, Mary, define Dusty. Y'all literally just used it. Well, when people say Dusty, I think it comes from... Um, Shira Sevens on on YouTube, she like says that men who aren't providers. Uh, I don't know. People are calling each other's are, hairlines dusty. Well, basically, any any man who's not a, basically your sugar daddy is is a dusty. She calls them dusties. Oh, I don't know that term for the same meaning. But I think like feminists are starting to use it to like Mine refer is, to like a scrub. It's like what the yeah. same thing that a scrub was in yeah. the '90s is I, like okay. a dusty. I can see that. Or like in the 2010s, it was an f boy. It's the same thing. Is that term still used? Not really. It should have stuck around, right? That's a pretty good term. DCNC said, Kellen, where would you set up the mocha cam? Trademark. Kellen isn't going to set up a mocha. There will be no like, mocha in the studio. This implies that I'm going to go and like, get a cat. Like we're going to like, what? Like we're going to kidnap <laughs> yeah. like a cat? No, yeah. It's just... No. If there happens to be a cat in the studio, it's happened know. before, I'll, and it I'll was bogus. I'll set it up in the third chair or something. We'll figure it out. So there's a, there's like a beanie on like the thing that Bocus used to sit on, like sleep on downstairs, like a beanie and like a and something else. So it looks like there's just like if you just glance by, it looks like Bocus is sleeping there, and it made me really sad. You didn't need to say that. It was very sad. Corey Anderson said, "My wife doesn't know about how much I spend on super chats." That's okay, man. <laughs> Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Stick around. Vidi Beasley said Dune 2 comes oh, out tonight. Good. I haven't seen it yet. So. Uh, yeah, on streaming. Oh, sweet. Maybe How I'll do exciting. That. DC and C Long said, ago. Kellen, you're doing an okay job, I guess. Thanks, friend. He is. He's doing good. Corey Anderson said, Mary, how many pairs of shoes do you own? Five. 
No, oh, no. More Six. than that. More than that. That's a, another wife jack meme. Or more of like a husband jack. Like, it's, don't you already have that? Don't it's you already have shoes definitely like that? <laughs> over 20. Wow. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it were like 30. Is that a lot for a woman? I don't know. I don't think that's that. I right. think fit. I How think about you? Me? How hmm. many pairs that I actually wear? How many do I have? How many do you have? I don't know. Maybe. I don't even know. Maybe 10. Maybe 10. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Brett, you like shoes, right? Uh, I, I have a good amount of, of shoes, but it's, I'm, I'm on the same thing with my clothes. I have a lot of clothes, but end up wearing the same. I wear like the same two pairs. Of I have pairs. like, uh, so I have like a lot of clothes, but end up wearing the same 10 black shirts that I just rotate every day in and out. Yeah. And then I and have you different throw like I away your white t-shirts like a psycho. And I have different shirts for like I have black shirts that are for skating and black shirts that are for work, which is like the the ones for skating are thinner because it's just mm-hmm. it, in the especially in the summer you just you sweat more. Um but with shoes I have like I don't know, less than 20. Okay. Shane H. Wilder said, sorry, Mary, I reworded that multiple times to fit the character limit and still screwed it up, LOL. <laughs> also, I have like a bunch that I just no haven't thrown away yet, even though I haven't worn them in ages. They just sit there because I'm you should sell them. with them. Uh, th- nobody wants used shoes. It's oh, just okay. weird. Nate said, no scrubs is one of my favorite songs all time. And it was a great song. It was. Uh, but, guys, but Red Light Special by TLC is their best song. Any statement to the contrary is just wrong. I've never heard that one. Yep. Um, Rock and Roll is Your Mom said, if someone has a crush on HCB, what to do? Question mark. Um, you file a, a request for courtship at dates at timcast.com. Um, headline, yeah. And then you use the header uh, attention HCB. And then you put your application in there before the amount for the dowry all of those things. Once you fill it out, you'll. How many uh, goats do you have? Make sure you include that. Yes, that's important. Yeah. Somebody, somebody got like we we talked about dowry one day on here, and then somebody was like, "You guys got it all wrong. You guys don't know anything about dowries." I'm like, "You're right. I know nothing. I literally <laughs> know. Dowry I know nothing crisis. about dowries. <laughs> this is true." DC and C said, "Kellen, make sure you're here for the dunk tank episode. There will never be what? a dunk tank Why episode. Not? I didn't think it was a terrible. I think we idea. could pull it off. Okay." Then, Especially now that like, you know, for the new studio is opening. There's like a lot more room for activities. Sure. You know, so you guys could do it if you wanted to. I bet. Well, yeah, we'll talk about it. I'm gonna make this happen. Kellen is personally. I'm on the be job. Responsible. I'm on the case. High Vulture seventy five said, "Good job in the host chair today, Kellen. Thank Brett, you. nice job in the guest chair. Oh, hi, Mary." Good job, Brad. Can we can we make this permanent? Can I just sit here every day and just babble? Do you love it? I love it. I love it. Um, Corey Anderson said, "Brett, did you grind that sketchy rail?" I don't know which one you're talking. I saw you send me that earlier. I don't know what rail you're actually talking about, but I did skate a rail this weekend. But I, I wouldn't call so it that sketchy. How you got hurt? No, no, oh. I, uh, something else. I, I did, it was from skating, but not from oh, okay. from that rail. I uh, you fall? No. Uh, so what happened was is. Um, I grinded this ledge and then basically you land and you have to turn quickly to avoid like a like a brick a wall and my arm caught the edge of the brick Ooh. wall so like I wasn't even falling my arm just went that direction because that's where my momentum went and it just caught it on the way out no fun but it's all good okay. I love it. it it looks fantastic all yeah. right adds personality it does um, are we caught up on the super chats it now? It seems, yeah. All I don't right. have any on my side. Somebody give Kellen the third crisis party for doing the, the hosting today. You are loud the, AF time. today. Yeah, yeah. Is it uh, just that so your, your other... It's this mic. Yeah. Okay, it must be because you're I on the another, another mic. Too. Yeah, yeah, you're we'll peaking. So I'm not time. louder than normal. Okay. So it's the mic, not me. Okay. Well, I don't know how we're going to do this outro. Uh, you, can, uh, you can do it however you please. Okay, well, um, you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived, although I am getting quite enough of that. Um, Brett, let them know where they can follow you. Yes, guys. You can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. You should do it. Yeah, and our Twitter is pop culture underscore show. Instagram is pop culture crisis pod. Facebook is pop culture crisis, but we're banned on TikTok. And uh, you can listen to our audio podcast on Spotify. 
Uh, and you guys can follow me at Kellen PDL. Um, we have one more super chat from Corey Anderson. It says that thin one. Oh, there's f three more coming in. That thin one at the school with that guy, Brett. And oh, um, no, no. I, I told you that was a, what a rail like that, which is like this thin square and high is the worst type because on camera, it will never actually look as annoying or as, uh, as difficult as a, as a rail like that actually is. It's low return on investment for something like that. And it wouldn't have been fun. It was like the start of the day. I was still like, um, I've explained to people in the back in the day, like for a lot of years, like when I wasn't driving and I would just walk to get around, it was, I was so much more loose all the time. Now I remember that like I'm older and I have to actually stretch when I'm, before I go out skating and I can't just put my skates on and go. Cause I'm not 20 anymore. DC and C he said 590. Thank you for telling us the, the episode number. It He's is right. episode 590. We almost missed that. Gordon <laughs> Shumway said there is a counter to no scrubs called No Pigeons yep. by Sporty Thieves. It's hilarious. It is really, really good. Is that like the, the, the pigeon is the female version of a scrub? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll look at that. I for, uh, the, Thank you. That's like, <laughs> he just unlocked like a core memory a memory for me. <laughs> uh, holy crap. Nate said Brett is a hardcore skater boy. You do know the T, when you use the eight, eight in sk first of all, if you use the eight, that's just cringe. But the Did T is redundant. Did she say see you later, boy? Yes. The T is redundant there, my friend. True. Shane H. Wilder said, Kellen, make sure to ask if Mary said her socials. <laughs> Did you say your socials? Yeah. Yes. That's a bit of a ritual for us now. So. Nice. It's not always bad. It's, it, <laughs> it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. Okay. Well, okay. We're caught up now? We're good. We're caught up. Okay, cool. Well, guys, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we're going to see you tomorrow. See you then.